Oh, solo today? Solo for the rest of the time. Yeah. Oh, well, that's your training.
Um, one thing I did want to go over with you all, um, I've got the request uh, the questions, and so we're going to change up the procedure that we use a little bit. What we're going to do is, after a witness is completely testifying, uh, we're going to excuse you all for, I'm going to say, five to ten minutes. Uh, obviously, take whatever time you need. Uh, you can compile whatever questions, that way you can gather your thoughts. Um, and while you're still outside the courtroom, once you're done with that, uh, somebody could just simply knock at the door, and then court staff will collect them. But if you'll recall, um, the court may have to review the question with the attorneys. You might as well do that while you're still back there, rather than try to limit that as much as possible. Uh, so then, uh, once we determine which, if any, can be asked, uh, then we will bring you all back in this group, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay? Uh, so we'll go with that. And then, if you recall, we're in the prosecution's case in chief, uh, and we were in a portion of the direct examination. You see Mark. Thank you, Andrew. So, um, to refresh where we left off last, uh, your testimony yesterday, uh, I believe that you explained that uh, Adam Fox uh, pulled you, Bill Null, and Brandon Caserta aside and asked you to, uh, if you would participate in surveillance of the governor's cottage. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And we admitted uh, People's Exhibit 181. That was a portion of that conversation. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In that event, that conversation is represented on um, Exhibit 171, your timeline, as event number six? Yes, sir. That's correct. Now let's talk about the surveillance. When you left the FTX site that evening, where did you go? Initially, Mr. Fox and I went to dinner, uh, just the two of us, and then we returned to the FTX site, uh, and we picked up the Null Brothers, and we went from the FTX site to the Walmart in Cadillac, Michigan. This is the same Walmart that you originally met uh, Mr. Fox at that day? Yes, sir. <clears throat> And uh, who was driving the vehicle from the FTX site to that Walmart? I was driving. Why is it that you were driving? Uh, I, one reason was I had, a, I had a vehicle, and two, uh, and the primary reason was officer safety. At that point, I'm with uh, three individuals who are uh, potential subjects of this investigation. I'm acting in an undercover capacity. If something goes wrong, uh, I'd like to have control of the vehicle to de-escalate the situation or, or take care of business in some other form or fashion to, to make sure I am safe. And to be clear, both Mike Null and Bill Null were in the car at this point? Yes, sir. Was there any discussion uh, during the course of that ride from the FTX to the Walmart? There was. Can you give the jury a, a general idea of the topic of conversation? Uh, Mr. Fox was generally discussing the plans for that evening, as well as the plan overall. Did you record this conversation? I did. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 183? I am. Can you give the jury a, a general description of uh, what 183 is? This is a recording uh, taken during that ride to the, to the Walmart and Cadillac. <clears throat> where Mr. Fox is talking about the, the daytime surveillance he's already conducted. And is there an associated transcript that's marked 183T? There is, yes, sir. Is the transcript a fair and accurate representation of the recording? It is. And to be clear, uh, you said at this point it's you, Adam Fox, and both Nulls in the vehicle, is that correct? That's correct, sir. Uh, Aaron, at this point, I'm gonna move to admit uh, 183 and 183T. This would have been as we're leaving the Walmart, which approximately 9 p.m., sir. We're in that in that area. 851 sound a little bit more I, I had no cause to dispute you there, sir. Okay, and I'm basing that on because you started recording if I'm not. Um, if I'm accurate, at 11.56 a.m., right? It was a continuous record all day? It was, yes, sir. Um, and the recording is about four minutes off the true time. Would that be accurate as well? I, I, again, I have no reason to doubt you, sir. Okay, okay. So we're thinking about 8.51 at the time, correct? Approximately, okay. yes, sir. No, no, there's nothing, sir. Okay, Mr. Sider. We'd stand in our written objections. Thank you. Mr. Sider. Um, and uh, 
When we came on the last time, we left them. We didn't leave a trail at all. We didn't catch the whole trail. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 184? I am, yes, sir. Can you give the jury a brief description of uh, proposed exhibit 184? This is a recording taken during that same trip. Uh, Mr. Fox is talking about uh, the plan generally and specifically about blowing up a bridge. Uh, in the Elk Rapids area to impede law enforcement, to stop law enforcement from responding. And the same occupants in the vehicle at this point in time? Yes, sir. And is there an associated transcript that's marked as 184T? There is, yes, sir. The transcript is an accurate representation of the recording. It is, yes, sir. And move to admit uh, 184 and 184T. Just a brief one here. This takes place about a minute after last exhibit we just heard from, would that be accurate, sir? That matches my recollection, yes, sir. Thank you, no more, no more questions, no comments, no, sir. Thanks, give me a stand on our written objections. Mr. Barnett. I invite the chat, just in case we all have fashion, and Mr. Reagan's is coming. Okay, 184-184-D will be in. This is the popular place. So we don't book to a dollar more like this. We got very heavy security detail there. A lot of fucking spines and not going to order to use okay? Two is potentially be able to fucking force them. Here. It's a little town right there. It's a little bridge that goes on. Pull that fucking bridge, and there's like no other way for the cops to get around there. Most of the way, besides that, are like 20 plus miles in all directions. Okay? So that gives us maybe a 15 to 20 minute head start. By that time, we can have the dates in the fucking boat, and we go to the fucking bridge. Okay. 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 Are you familiar with proposed exhibit 186? I am. Can you give the jury a brief description of uh, Exhibit 186? Uh, this is uh, during that same ride uh, to the Walmart, same participants in the vehicle, or same folks in the vehicle. Uh, Bill Null is talking about uh, fighting the government in court, uh, and Mr. Fox is talking about uh, the plan. And there's an associated transcript with this exhibit that's marked as 186T? There is. <clears throat> The transcript is fair and accurate representation of the reporter? It is. And at this time, I'm going to move to admit uh, 186 and 186 T. So what's the timeline relative to the last exhibit? Uh, it would have been in the, in the same the same course of the, the conversation, sir, it, Your Honor. Uh, insofar as it, whether it's one or two or three minutes, I, I couldn't say uh, specifically. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Uh, if I may, Your Honor, just uh, follow up on the court's question timeline. This would be about 8.58 8 p.m., correct? Uh, sir, that, that matches with my recollection so generally, yes, sir. following consecutive, at this point in time, one after the other, the other exhibits, correct? That's correct, yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Chairman, stand on our written objections and point out the context is not clear. Objection is to context. And uh, the court uh, has discussed um, how concerns uh, relative to that may be addressed uh, for the purposes here. 186 and 186T will both be. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you can say today. You know, I've done fun with 22 before, fun with two years ago. So you guys want to hear that? You know, we have a trial title of the fun with this is my ideal situation with Pete Vince. It's like we take her here and we fucking two both system. We won't take her home to sit that bitch on the middle of the Drop the fucking motor for a moment down the bottom of the Michigan and 
Exhibit 187. I am, yes, sir. Uh, can you give the jury a brief description of uh, 187? Yes, sir. Uh, same conversation uh, on the drive to Walmart. Uh, Mr. Fox is talking about pooling money from various individuals to purchase explosives. And the same occupants in the vehicle at this point in time? Yes, sir. Mr. Fox, myself, and, and all brothers. And there's an associated transcript that's marked as 187T. There is. Is that transcript a fair and accurate representation of the report? It, it is. I move to admit 187 and 187T. Just a quick slide here on the time frame, sir. Eight included the here. The jury to understand that this is around the 9 13 p.m. hour. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. No more questions. Mr. Sack. Please stand out of written objections. Thank you. Mr. Barnett. Stand out of objections. Okay. Uh, 187 and 187C would be. Your Honor, if I may, I'm sorry. I, I just have one more question. Sure. Is, is this at the Walmart at this point in time? You know. I believe we had arrived at the Walmart by now, yes, sir. So, so now we're at the Walmart in a car outside the car? In a car, sir. Okay, so we're at the mall at the Walmart. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Of course, this is the same. Uh, So we're going to be putting together a little more that we can be now. Same with the organization specifically tied. My ultimate goal is that obviously our organization is to do five dream. That's going to be strictly for uh, the baker. Okay? Strictly for baking ingredients. <clears throat> now we heard Mr. Fox there say, or make a reference to the baker and baking ingredients. What did he mean by that? Explosives. And the person that could, the baker was a person that could supply explosives and the baking ingredients are the explosives. And are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 188? I am, yes sir. Can you give the jury a brief description of 188? It, it's uh, during that same evening uh, in the Walmart parking lot at this point, uh, same participants or same folks are in the vehicle. Uh, and I am introducing myself to the Wall brothers. And this conversation, is it consecutive to the other conversations? It is, yes, sir. Um, and there's an, uh, an associated transcript that's marked as 188T. There is. And that transcript is a fair and accurate representation of the recording? It is, yes, sir. Move to admit 188 and 188T. Just to get another timestamp, uh, what here? I'm an agent. Yes, sir. Would this be around the 9.18 p.m. hour? Would that be a fair? That's, that's fair, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you. No more questions or comments, Mr. Sack. Just stand on the written objections. Mr. Clark. Short point of view. Did you say it's continuous or continuous? Well, what do you use uh, this clip from another clip? I, I don't think I used that, that word. Maybe the attorney did. I think he said continuous. Yes, this okay. is all one continuous recording. There are words said between this and the last exhibit. There are words that, that are said between this and the last exhibit. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm including that. Okay, now I see the scope of what you're doing. Uh, your position is 188 that's how it's going to work out. They used to look really fucking like, I used to call them different names, like, hey, Bill, and I was like, ah, fuck, you know. <laughs> Whoops. I bet it's going to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 190? 
I am, yes, sir. Can you give the jury a brief description of uh, Exhibit 190? It's a conversation that occurred during the same evening in the Walmart parking lot, uh, talking about preparing for the, the surveillance that night. And same occupants in the vehicle at this point in time? Yes, sir. Associated transcript is uh, 190T? Yes, sir. Is that transcript a fair and accurate representation of the record? It is. Your Honor, at this point, I'm going to move to admit uh, Exhibit 190 and 190T. Just for purposes of time stamp, again, there. This is around 931, correct? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. No more questions. Thank you. Sorry. Should we stand Mr. Barnett. Same objection to the timeline. Uh, 190, 190, see if we can. Yeah, then everybody bought this. I knew we were going to go for a ride, so I thought it was a good one. Yeah. No, I had two minutes to dinner, and that's why I had to pay a certain amount. See? All right, that second paragraph there. Uh, where Mike Null says, I knew we were going to go for a ride, so I effing, I didn't want to. Objection, judge, is there a question? Right. I'm going to preface the question based upon that statement, Your Honor. Yeah, that's for a question. Okay, okay. we're going to join the test and answer the exhibit speaks for itself. Okay. Um, so we'll do the same to the extent that the uh, exhibit does speak for itself, uh, and this is one line in the Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, if we're going to, uh, for the purpose of repeating statements, correct the witness's attention, perhaps we could just go with the number paragraph now. Yes, sir. So in paragraph three, the statement by uh, Mike Null there, um, what is he referencing? The, the we were going on surveillance. And objection, speculation, move to strike, Your Honor. It says you're right, not surveillance. Move to strike. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are some additional questions that the court's going to have to answer or ask to determine if um, that question is appropriate. So I think what we'll do is excuse you at this point for a little break. All right. Thank you. Mr. Fox, and I really laid out the, the plans for that evening, so I associated the, the ride with conducting the surveillance. Okay. Uh, same objection. You know, I didn't hear his answer, no. Judge. Forgive me. No, so, okay. Sorry, sir. Mr. Fox had already laid out the plans for that evening, so I associated the surveillance that Mr. Fox had spoken about with the, the ride that Mr. Null was referencing. May I inquire? Sure. Did Mike Null specifically say, I'm going on the surveillance ride? Did he make any reference to the word? Um, surveillance and or recon? Uh, he did not use the word surveillance or recon, okay. or recon. In, this, in, in, okay. in this clip, no, sir. So we would reassert that line stands for right, Your Honor, since now the witness has testified that it didn't retroactively regard any conversations regarding um, surveillance and or um, reconnaissance. Okay. Yes, sir. Can we leave that at a your Honor, Your Honor, that's a, a weight argument, not admissibility. So uh, it's already been outlined the purpose of the uh, surveillance. The ride that they were going on was to conduct surveillance. Um, and the people within the car are going to be participating in that. Mike Null is stating uh, that uh, he knew that they were going to go on a ride. The reasonable inference is he knew the purpose for the ride. Additionally, Bill Null was there specifically um, at the the conversation with Adam Fox where he said, hey, we're going to go on this surveillance. Mike Null wasn't there, but the reasonable inference is that there was a conversation that happened between the two of them that he learned of the purpose for that specific ride. Okay. Uh, well, um, 
And before anybody jumps up, let me finish what I'm going to say. The court agrees that that may be a reasonable inference, but that's a reasonable inference for the prior effect to be the one to make, potentially. Um, and so, uh, certainly, uh, in argument, the parties will be allowed to connect those two things, um, but without, um, uh, in closer in time, uh, in this case, uh, Mike and all, uh, having used uh, the words recon and surveillance, uh, again, a party can certainly argue that I knew we were going to go for a ride. And I'll move on there. That's fine. I think part of this discussion is for any future questions, too. Um, relative to the same type of thing. Uh, and uh, so if those words were used and that basis could be established, meaning had Mike Null said recon or surveillance or something else in context of this conversation, then perhaps uh, the question may not, or the determination by the court may have been different uh, in, in the future, maybe as well. But uh, relative to things like that, um, the statement will stand for what it is and the trier fact or can make whatever determination. Nothing further on. No, thank you. Mr. Sack. It's 9.30, I assume everyone is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mark, are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 191? I am. And uh, can you give the jury a brief description of uh, proposed 191? Yes, sir. It's uh, during that same time frame. We're in the Walmart parking lot at this point. The same people in the car, myself, Fox, the Renault brothers. Uh, Mr. Fox is further detailing his plan for kidnapping the government. And is there an associated transcript mark as 191 too? There, there is. And in terms of the time frame, this uh, clip, does it follow the other clips in it, time? It does. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit uh, 191 and 191P. Again, a short one here. Would this be about the 10.02 p.m. hour that night? Yes. Okay. And is this a recording enhanced for sound? In other words, is there any editing going on, not tampering, but editing in terms of enhancing the sound from a lower to a louder volume when it comes to any of the individuals? None that I'm aware of, sir. Fair enough. No more questions uh, and no comments. Mr. Fifty and Council's comments are
went out to sit in the fucking parking lot and got me at 10 o'clock at night on a fucking Saturday night. Who am I even going to do recon? <laughs> Does anybody even go do recon anything? Fuck no. We've done tons of it in the past, like, one month or so. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, here's all, here's all you can do and scoop down the fucking one on that. We are criminals in the head of criminals, man. On the overlay. Mm -hmm. It coincided with pictures and shit like we actually took pictures of all of them. Yeah, we went we went up there, we walked around there and spoke to the people. I guess this place from what happens happens much better in terms of Actual viability. Yeah. We are. We might go to the other lanes, but we ain't getting out of lanes in the practice. That's just a high speed button there, we're all fucking dead. I'm not sure we'll be hanging in the hall, because that's a lot of work. Thank you. 
Now that um, that conversation, I believe your testimony is that it took place in the Walmart parking lot. Is that correct? Correct. And to uh, reference your timeline, the uh, the ride from the FTX to the Walmart is that represented as event seven? From the FTX to the Walmart, yes, sir. Now, um, as you're at the Walmart, uh, does anyone meet your vehicle there? Yes, sir. Two other vehicles containing other folks arrived uh, to meet us. Oh, uh, before the, yeah. Okay, specifically, who met you there? Uh, uh, there was one vehicle containing uh, Brian Higgins, Caleb Franks, and Ty Garvin, and then another vehicle containing uh, CHS Dan, Barry Croft, and Undercover Red. Did you observe Eric Molitor at the Walmart at all? I did. And was he in one of those vehicles or in a separate vehicle? He was in a separate vehicle. What did you observe Mr. Molitor do when he arrived? Uh, Mr. Fox got out of my vehicle, went in, into Mr. Baller's vehicle. Right. Do you know what they did at that point in time? No, sir. Was there a game plan developed for what was going to happen after all these vehicles arrived at the Walmart? Yes, sir. Can you tell us about that, please? Uh, so it was agreed that we would essentially caravan up to the Elk Rapids area and we meet up back up in Elk Rapids and talk about the division of labor uh, for the surveillance that evening. And where was it that you were supposed to meet back up at? It was a AMVETS uh, parking lot in the Elk Rapids area that was uh, shared a lot with the, the Easy Mart, I believe. Prior to leaving, did you have any discussion with the Nulls about uh, returning to the FTX? I did. Can you tell the jury about that, please? Yes. Uh, one of the Noel brothers had a, a teenage son with him at the FTX, and I, I believe maybe the teenage son had a, a teenage friend. There was some discussion about uh, whether they were comfortable leaving their uh, friends, or, I'm sorry, their son and his friend back at the FTX alone. I said if they weren't, I'd be happy to take them back to uh, the Luther FTX, and they declined, and we went on the surveillance. To be clear, was this a conversation you were having with both Mike Nall and Bill Nall? Yes, sir. And you made, did you make that offer to both of them? Yes, sir. I would object to foundation, Your Honor. What is this taking place? Back to that, the question at the time and location for that conversation. Sure. And um, to be clear, um, let's back up a second. This conversation that you're describing about possibly returning to the FTX site, where is that taking place? In the Walmart parking lot. And in terms of the time frame you've described as observing the other vehicles arrive and the kind of agreement that, um, okay, we're gonna go to uh, the Elk Rapids area, caravan there and meet up at the Easy Mark. Where did this conversation take place in relation to that? I believe it, Mr. Fox would have been out of my vehicle at the time. Uh, so further on into the, the, our time frame at the, at the Walmart, it, it may have occurred uh, prior to everyone rallying and meeting, uh, but I, I, where it falls between that that large group meeting and leaving, I, I'm unsure. So, okay. Uh, based on that testimony, you have any objection? Thank you, and if. I'm not sure if you answered this question or not, but I, I think I asked you, did you pose the question to both uh, William Null and Michael Null that offer to uh, return to the FTX site? Yes. And uh, what was the response from William Null? They, he declined. What about Bill Null? Or Same. excuse me, what about Mike Null? Same, he declined. Now, this, uh, this process of leaving the uh, Walmart uh, to go to the Elk Rapids area, uh, who was in your car? Uh, myself and the Null Brothers after, after we left the Walmart. So 
uh, Adam Fox had left your vehicle at that point. In time. Correct. And on, in terms of your timeline, this is represented as event eight. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Roughly, what time of the evening are we uh, talking about? The point where you've left the um, the Walmart parking lot. The ten o'clock hour. Within the ten o'clock hour. And are you still recording? I am. Are you familiar with proposed Exhibit 192? I am. Can you give us a brief description of Exhibit 192? This is uh, occurring on that same evening, uh, same night. Uh, at this point, it's just myself and the Null brothers in the car, uh, and Bill Null is talking about a piece of property that the governor was trying to obtain. And there's an associated transcript of uh, that's marked as 192T? There is. The transcript is a fair and accurate representation of the recording. It is. Your Honor, at this point, I'm going to move to admit 192 and 192T. Just to put a we have on this. Would it be fair for the jury to understand this took place around the 10.22 p.m. hour? Yes. That's 10.22, is that a yes, sir? Yes. Thank you. No more questions. Mr. Sack. If we can stand in our written objections. Mr. Martin. I assume as to uh, lack of context and continuity here with the rest of the tape. Uh, the court discussed that, and I got a question to show you what it was 192 and 192 This was the place that Richard Sullivan was trying to get together. Yeah, that's the one. As your, um, let's strike that. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 193? All right. Can you um, tell the jury uh, what proposed exhibit 193 is? It's uh, uh, same, approximately the same time, same evening. Uh, the Nulls and myself are in the vehicle. Uh, and Mr. Null, Bill Null is saying he's down to do recon. And there's associated transcript that's marked as 193T? Yes, sir. Is that fair and accurate representation of the report? It is, yes, sir. Move to admit 193 and 193T. Just while you're in the time stamp, this is about nine minutes following the start of the last one, about the 1031 p.m. hour, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. No more questions on the objections. Any more objections? Okay. 193 and 193T will be. familiar with proposed exhibit 194 I am can you describe uh, proposed 194 for the jury yes sir it's the uh, same period of time uh, same conversation we're on our way to Elk Rapids at this point myself and the Null brothers are in the vehicle uh, and I asked them how it came to pass that they met Fox and there's an associated transcript marked as 194 T yes sir the transcript is a fair and accurate representation of the recording. It is, yes, sir. And uh, then we move to admit uh, proposed 194 and 194T. Yes, sir. Just to put a plug here on the time stamp, Your Honor, would it be fair for the jury to 
10.52 p.m. hour, about 25 minutes to start, about 22 minutes after the start of the last video we just heard. Yes, sir. That's correct? Yes, sir. No yes, more sir. questions, no comments. Yes, sir. arrive at the um, the MVETS uh, parking lot of approximately what time is that? In the 11 o'clock hour, sir. So how long did it take from you to get from the Cadillac Walmart to the MVETS parking lot in Elk Rapids? Approximately an hour to an hour and a half. When you arrived at the MVETS parking lot, did you meet up with the the other participants? We did, yes, sir. And how many vehicles are there? Three vehicles. Um, at that point in time, was there some sort of discussion with Mr. Fox? There was. Can you tell us about that, please? Mr. Fox handed out assignments for the three different vehicles that night that were going to be participating in the surveillance. And can you describe for us um, the, the role that uh, your vehicle had? We were the lookout car. We were on the lookout for anything uh, either that would be pertinent to uh, any later action taken at that home or uh, law enforcement that evening. What was the, the, I guess, the task or the assignment for the other two vehicles? Can you describe that, please? I, just, I didn't hear the last question. Forgive me. The task for the other two vehicles involved. Oh, thank you. Uh, the the vehicle driven by Mr. Higgins was going to go down the governor's road and pass the governor's home. Uh, the vehicle driven by CHS Dan was to go across the Birch Lake to a boat, a boat launch to see if they could see the uh, signal car, which is the car driven by Mr. Higgins, uh, from where they were on the boat launch. 
All right. So if I have this correctly, you are kind of the, the surveillance lookout car. Correct. You're, uh, looking for law enforcement, and Higgins is driving the signal car. Correct. And Dan is driving the spotter car. Correct. All right. Um, and these assignments were given out by who you said? Fox. Specific to your assignment as being the lookout, what is it that you were looking for? Uh, looking out for, for law enforcement that, that night, uh, either a local county or state police officer that's patrolling as we're doing this, as the group is doing this surveillance. And, and additionally, anything that would be useful in the, the planning of an attack at that location or notable in the planning of attack at the location uh, in the general vicinity. Your Honor, um, I think this, this would be a good time for us to take a, a brief break uh, before we move into the kind of the next chapter. Uh, that's the Yeah. 
We switched it today. We try to get them all right.
All right, folks, let's get everybody back, please.
Uh, anything we need to discuss about bringing the jurors back in? No, ma'am. No, thank you. Okay. All rise for the Back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we took a little longer on this so that uh, once you can turn the culprit here. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> oh, Mark, when we left off, you were describing uh, the arrival at uh, the Anvex parking lot and how Mr. Fox had given assignments at that point, correct? Yes, sir. Now, that uh, arrival at the Anvex parking lot is represented on your timeline as uh, event number nine, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And if we can, can we put up exhibit 210? <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's been admitted as Exhibit 210. And is this a photograph of uh, the AMVETS and Easy Mark parking lot? It is. It's a Can you show for the jury using the, uh, the pointer uh, where the cars were located for this meeting? And I think you described your your car was the lookout car. Is that correct? correct? Yes, sir. Um, what is it that you were specifically looking out for? Uh, law enforcement or anything notable uh, for the, the plan. And what, was that what Mr. Fox told you to do? Yes, sir. And um, what was what was it that you were supposed to do if the occupants in your vehicle observed law enforcement or or anything like that? Make the other vehicles aware of it. In what fashion? Uh, radio. We had uh, walkie-talkie radios, radio to the, the other vehicles to say, hey, there's there's cops here, state police here. Oh. Excuse me. Is this another test by Mr. Fox? Okay, thank you. Exactly. That's what I understand. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. The actual uh, route that your vehicle traveled when you left this uh, Easy Mart, um, I'm going to show you what's been admitted as Exhibit 4 and ask you to, to first identify the governor's uh, street on this map. Timberlake. Okay, so it's, and it's directly to the west of... Uh, Birch Lake, is that correct? Correct, yes, sir. Okay. And as far as your vehicle's route of travel after you left the Easy Mart, uh, while you're looking out as uh, for police officers or uh, other suspicious things as Mr. Fox tasked you to do, can you describe for the jury where your vehicle traveled? Generally, okay, yes, sir. So we were instructed not to go down the governor's road, but rather to be in the vicinity of the governor's neighborhood. And who instructed you to do Mr. that? Fox. Okay. Uh, so we would have been on 31, and then on Williams here, uh, we would have spent time on Carn, uh, and in the area around here as well, uh, Birch Lake. I don't think we went on Winters above here, uh, but we would have passed Timberlake uh, at least twice, I believe three times. Okay. The entrance, Timberlake, I should say. 
And during the course of this activity of driving uh, this area, uh, your recording device is still recording, is that correct? It is. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 196? I am. Can you give the jury a brief description of 196? Yes, sir. So uh, this is a conversation uh, that occurred in the Easy Mark lot or as we're leaving the Easy Mark lot at approximately 1117 that evening. Uh, it's myself and the Nulls in the vehicle. And uh, we hadn't been told to start our surveillance yet. Uh, we were, we were going to be told later on to start, but I thought it was best to leave that lot as there was another vehicle sitting there. And I thought that would look suspicious if law enforcement went past. So we, we left the lot and kind of meandered around until we were called to our task. Why was it important for you um, that another vehicle uh, may be sitting there and it might look suspicious for law enforcement? If you I didn't want to have any contact with law enforcement that evening, uh, both uh, from a personal safety standpoint, uh, as well as to, to maintain my undercover role. And when you say from a personal safety standpoint, what, what does that mean? Some, some of the, including Mr. Fox, uh, had, had indicated that he would kill law enforcement if confronted uh, or if, you know, we were doing something that's illegal. Uh, and I didn't know what the reaction would be to, to some of these folks if they were confronted by law enforcement. Now, is there an associated transcript uh, to 196 that's marked 196 Yes, sir. Is that transcript a fair and accurate representation of the recording? It is. I'm going to move to admit 196 and 196 T. Just for purposes of time stamp, um, Jason, is this after you left the AMBET parking lot? We're kind of leaving the AMBET parking lot as this is occurring, sir. Okay. And would, you, would it be fair that this uh, 196 is around the 1117 p.m. out. It would, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? No comments. Briefly. Did you prepare this transcript? I did not. Do you know who did it? I do not. Judge, we'd ask that you should. Mr. Robert. Same objections. Same objections as your previous ones or same objections? Good question. Good context. 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 Um, and the agent has testified that the uh, transcript, even though you may not have prepared it, does fairly and accurately uh, depict the audio as he indicated. Uh, that's the consideration for the court to make. Uh, so based on that, uh, and the other objections being overruled, as uh, previously indicated, uh, 196 and 196 team. Are you familiar with uh, proposed exhibit 200? Yes, sir. Can you give the jury a brief description of uh, proposed 200? Uh, this is uh, during the, the course of the surveillance. Uh, it's that evening at approximately uh, 1124 p.m. Uh, myself and the Nulls are in the car, and uh, I'm making a comment about something I saw in, in Mr. Uh, Ms. Bill Null response. And what are you doing um, during the course of this audio? We're, we're doing our, our task. We're, we're serving as a lookout. And is the vehicle stationary or moving? Moving. Is there an associated transcript that's marked as 200T? Yes, sir. And transcript, is that a fair and accurate representation of the report? It is. And move to admit 200 and 200T. Time stamp there for purposes of the time frame. Agent, this is taking place around, this is 200, is that correct? Yes. Is it 200? Um, around the 11.30 p.m. hour that night? Yes, sir. Around that. About right? About right, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. No more questions or comments. Mr. Sire. Please stand up here questions. Thank you. 
Bill Nolan and Mike Nolan's vehicle at that point in time? Yes, sir. Are you familiar with proposed 201? Uh, I am, yes, sir. And uh, can you give the jury a brief description of 201? Yes, sir. Pardon me. Uh, it's audio from that same evening. Myself and the Null brothers are in the car. It's approximately 11.29 in the evening. Uh, I'm commenting that we're passing the governor's right. Timberlake. And is there an associated transcript marked 201T? There is. Is the transcript a fair and accurate representation of the recording? Yes, sir. Move to admit 201 and 201T. Approximately, yes, sir. Okay. And with the difference that we talked about, that would be around the 11.37 p.m. hour that night, correct? Yes, sir. I thought you said 11.29. Uh, well, the, the timestamp I have is 11.29, sir. Okay. But uh, around, I agree with you that it's, it's around the 11.30 hour. Okay. So calculation was 11 hours and 41 minutes. It's four minutes off. Our calculation came up to 11.37 p.m. I'm not asking. Oh, yeah, I, I'll, 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 I'll accept your representation. Sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No more questions. No comments, Your Honor. Thank you. No, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
He is, yes, sir. Okay. And during the course of this conversation at the Oasis Red Bull Tavern, did Mr. Fox say whether he had uh, observed the signal car or not? Yes, he did, and he did. Now, um, let's go to, uh, uh, to be clear, the uh, acting as a lookout on September 12th is represented on your timeline as event 10, is that correct? Correct, yes, sir. And the debrief at uh, the Oasis Red Bull Tavern is represented as event 11, is that right? That's correct, sir. All right. Now, was there a second day to the uh, FTX? There was. Yeah, did you participate in that? I did. Approximately what time did you arrive at the site of the FTX? 10 a.m. And how long did you stay? Two hours. Did you observe uh, Mike Null at uh, the second day of the FTX? I did. Did you observe Bill Null there? I did. What about Eric Mahler? I did. And what sort of activities were going on while you were there uh, the second day of the FTX? This, uh, they were doing live fire drills in the, the kill house. So they were uh, practicing breaching, kind of what a, very similar to what I uh, described in, that they were doing, in, in, or folks were doing in Cambria County, or not Cambria, Cambria, Wisconsin, uh, back in July of 2020. Did you observe uh, Mike Null participate in this kill house? Yes, sir. Uh, did you observe uh, Bill Null participate in this kill house? Yes, sir. What about Eric Molitor? Uh, no, sir. How would you describe his participation on that day? He was stationed at the entrance to the, the kill house as the, what I understood to be the medical officer. Could you repeat that? Yes, sir. He was stationed at the uh, adjacent to the entrance to the kill house as the medical officer. When you say as the medical yeah, officer. One moment, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. I yield the witness. Good morning. Where is it? You weren't on as long as uh, Agent Empel, no, so uh, that's a good thing. I'm going to ask. Uh, just a request of you, if you could keep your voice up so everybody can hear you in the courtroom, obviously, and particularly the jury, would you do that for I'll us? I'll do my but best, yes, sir. You talk very fast, too, okay? That's why I had to ask the things that I had to ask, because sometimes you just, and, and I got it, it's, you know, it's part of the business, maybe it's part of the job, but if you could slow down so everybody could hear you, okay? I will do my best. If you don't understand a question I'm asking you, would you kindly let me know, please? Of course. Okay. Um, do you have any problems understanding me right
At what point in time did they decide not to go after the uh, home on the island? It would have been by the time uh, before before the Luther F FTX. Okay. How many days in between? I'm not sure. Sir. Okay, but a number of days in between, right? Yes. Okay. The threat stream always took place, and the threat stream regarding the attack always was viable day to day, correct? Correct. Okay. So the FBI decided, well, we're not going to worry about the island. Is that what you're telling us? No, I don't think I'm telling you that at all. Yes, okay. So, so up until the Luther FTX, the target on the island was still viable, of which the FBI had supplied pictures. I think he had conducted a, a daytime surveillance. Mr. Fox, he being Mr. Fox, had conducted a daytime surveillance and had shifted his focus to the, the, uh, the governor's vacation. What other pictures were taken by any of the group members other than the FBI regarding the house up on the island? On um, Mackinac, sir? Yes, sir. Um, None. None that I'm aware of. The only pictures provided were that of the FBI, correct? Correct. How many people were at the Cambria FTX, if you recall? 20 plus. Okay. Was everybody there planning, training for purposes of the plan, the, the kidnap plan? No. No. Because not everybody there knew what was going on, right? True. And, and before I begin before again. I, I assume. People going to FTXs is, is not in in and of themselves, let me be clear, in and of themselves illegal. People go there with their guns, they shoot at targets, right? It's it's a kind of a weapons training, weapon safety, right? Is that a yes? Yes. You, where she's recording everything. Right. And if I speak too fast, she's gonna slow I'm me down. Okay. Uh, it's also about survival, yes? Yes. And, and, and um, you know, medical kind of training, correct? Yes. Okay, so FTX is in, a, in and by themselves are not illegal, yes? In and of themselves, Okay. Correct. How many people, if you know, attended Munich to, to, to go to an FTX? I don't know. What I about, I'm sorry? I did not. Okay. Um, so you went to the Luther FTX, correct? Correct. How many people were at Luther? Who attended Luther to, you know, do the FTX? How many people were there? Yeah, roughly. Roughly 20. 20? Maybe slightly less. Okay, yes. okay. But not everybody at the Luther FTX was arrested, correct? That's correct. Not everybody at the Luther FTX knew about the plan, correct? Correct. And so those individuals participating in the FTX in and of themselves are not doing anything illegal, correct? The way you're phrasing it, yes, sir, I agree. Okay, okay. Now, you yourself said that you had participated in one of the kill houses, correct? Yes, sir. Did, was that a live fire kill house that you participated in? I, I participated, yes, sir. Okay. Was was that, were you participating in an FTX or were you participating in part of the plan to kidnap the governor? I was acting in my capacity as an undercover. Okay. But as, in a regular FTX or in an FTX associated with the plan to kidnap the governor? Sir, I never had the intent to follow through with this. I'm plan. not asking that question. My question is, did you participate in an FTX with knowledge that the others were actually involved in this training plan exercise to kidnap the governor? Can you repeat your question, sir? Sure. You participated in an FTX, a, a, kill, a kill house, correct? Correct. Okay. It was just a regular FTX, correct? I was... How, how do you mean, sir? Well, and that, that's fair. At the one that you participated in, and that was in Cambria, if I remember correctly. I participated in the kill house at both. At both. Okay, let's start with Cambria. Um, your testimony is, is that the plans were developed in Cambria 
at some point in time to kidnap the governor? I, I, my testimony is that Mr. Fox had a plan to uh, assault the Michigan State Capitol and uh, potentially kidnap legislators and or the governor. So that was the only plan at Cambria? As far as that, yes. Okay. And you participated in the Kill House at Cambria? I did. Okay. Well, did the any part of the Kill House in uh, Cambria resemble any part of the Capitol? In other words, were schematics of the Capitol passed out? Yes or no? Your, your question is, were schematics of the Capitol Schematics passed, passed around for people before they engaged in this FTX. Were they passed out at the Cambria FTX? No. Okay. Um, were targets identified as to the number of Capitol Police, Michigan State Police, or law enforcement identified for purposes of target shooting at the Cambria FTX? No. Okay. Was the Capitol supposed to be a daytime or a nighttime operation? I don't think that had been determined. Okay. So in terms of the detailed plan at Cambria, it was never discussed openly with the people participating at that FTX, correct? Correct. Okay. Because some folks there who were not arrested were just participating in, a, in an FTX, right? Correct. And I didn't ask you, an FTX is? Field training exercise. Okay, where people go on properties and they practice being GI Joe with their guns, right? The regular folk who are not part of a different plan. I don't know if I'd phrase it quite like that, but okay. you did. I use GI Joe. I don't know why I use GI Joe. I don't have any military background, so forgive those who are in the military. But they, they kind of go and they, they shoot, right? That's one of the activities. Okay. Now, the Knowles were at Cambria, correct? Yes, sir. They weren't arrested after the Cambria uh, FTX, correct? That is correct. Okay. So then more of the plans were developed at Luther, correct? Correct. Okay, at least that was the intent because I think we heard testimony, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, there were some problems formulating the plans and getting agreement on the plans between Fix, Croft, and Fox, correct? I would agree that the, the plans were further solidified at Luther. Okay. I, I don't know anything about the, the okay. issues that you're speaking of. So, okay, so because in Cambria we have uh, the capital, correct? Correct. Apparently the, the, the home on the island, Mackinac Island, was X'd off the list, correct? By, by the time of Luther? By the time of Luther, yes. okay. And so now we're at Luther in September, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And at this point in time, we don't know if the plan included a nighttime attack extraction or a daytime uh, attack or extraction, correct? I, I did not know. You did not know. Correct. And you were there the whole time at Luther? Yes, sir. And you were recording the whole time at Luther? I, let, me, let me correct that. Please. Uh, I think there were folks that went to, uh, after the surveillance, a number of the folks returned to the campsite at Luther. I wasn't present at that campsite again until 10 a.m. approximately okay. that next morning. Okay, fair enough. And again, during the FTX, you were present on the first day, September 12th of the FTX, correct? Yes. Okay. And so for purposes of uh, this live fire or these drills or the clearing house or the clearing of the rooms, were any plans distributed of the governor's vacation home at, at any point in time during the first day? Not that I received. What, well, were you aware? Were you watching? Was aware. Okay. You're an FBI agent. I assume you're looking to see what people are doing, right? Yes. In other words, Fox and Croft weren't like handing out plans of the governor's home for purposes of the attack, were they? That's, that's fair. Okay. Not that I saw. Were there any sheets or anything else involving how many people regarding a detail would be at the governor's home. In other words, they got two law enforcement at the front and they got two law enforcement in the back and there's one in the house. There was no talk of any detail being present 
or the, excuse me, the number of detail being present for purposes of this attack. That was not discussed at Luther, was it? And if so, where would it be on your recording? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in one of the recordings. I'm talking specifically about the number, the number, not, not who would be there, but the number of people would be there so that the plan could be successfully executed. Yes. Okay. That was How, what's, what number were you given and by whom regarding the security detail or law enforcement being at the governor's home for purposes of the attack? During the ride uh, from uh, the Luther FTX site to the Cadillac uh, Walmart, Fox discussed seeing one uh, or having one MSP uh, protective detail uh, SUV there, and he believed there may be one or two uh, troopers in the house and one or two on the grounds. Okay. But he was speculating, correct? Based on what he'd seen, yes. Okay. Based on what he's seen, what, when did he see this detail at the governor's home? That's what he said. Well, you were with him. You were tasked to be with him, correct? Well, I wasn't there during the daytime surveillance. Sir. Okay. Well, did you receive any information that security detail were there during the certain No, sir. I didn't. Okay. In fact, in fact, the governor had left her that residence in June. She never went back after June, correct? That I don't know, sir. You don't have no idea. Is that is that like one of those things you can't say out loud? When did she when did she leave a residence? Why why would the governor be there when these plans are going on? I, I don't I don't know. I wasn't coordinating with that part of the case. I, I don't know where the governor was. And I'm just asking a question. Why would the bureau allow a daytime or nighttime surveillance if the governor's at her home there? Yeah, it's a good point. They, they wouldn't, they shouldn't. They would never have overlooked that, would they? Uh, I would she was not she was not there. She she exited early, yeah. right? I, I'm sure she wasn't there during the nighttime surveillance. Okay. I don't know when or where she comes and goes. Okay. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, at the Luther FTX, was there a, a was there a plan of how many pontoon boats or boats that would be used in this amphibious? Birch Lake attack. Yes. How many boats were? Uh, Mr. Fox talked about it being a two-boat attack, essentially uh, attacking from the water, uh -huh. um, and uh, and potentially having other people on foot flanking, uh, and then stealing uh, a boat from the governor's residence. Did the governor have a boat outside her residence? I don't know. So you have no idea. Yes. Did FBI coordinate with you, saying, "Hey, listen, she does have a boat out there." We got to stop these guys. Anything like that happen? No, sir. So you don't even know if there was a boat out there or not. I do not. But yet you're on a recon mission all around the area, but you have no idea what's in the water and outside the back of her house, correct? Correct. Okay. That wasn't part of my task. Okay. It might have been important. It was covered by the other members of the surveillance team. Okay. As I understood it. Okay. But when you all came back to debrief regarding the recon. Did anybody talk about the number of boats behind and nothing like that was ever discussed was it? Yes, sir. Okay. Then it would be fair to say that the Nulls didn't know anything about the, the, the amphibious attack? No, sir. That's not fair. Okay. That's not correct? No, when did they learn about the amphibious attack? Mr. Fox, in, in one of the clips that was played, Mr. Fox references uh, Mr. Fox references it. Okay. Tell the jury when was the end, when was this attack supposed to take place? It hadn't been set. Okay. No date certainly been set. Weren't they looking at pontoon boats for this amphibious attack? I don't. You know. did not see the pictures of the pontoon boats? No, sir. I did not. You haven't seen any of the exhibits regarding pontoon boats. No, sir. I what kind, okay. What uh, kind of boats were supposed to be taken on this amphibious attack? That I do not know. Okay. All the while, correct me if I'm wrong, you're still assessing, you're doing a threat assessment, a real threat assessment regarding what people are discussing and saying regarding this attack, right? Yes. Okay. But yet you're telling us today you have no idea what boats were to be used or how they were to be gotten. I, I do not know what boats were to be used. Okay. That's correct. No one ever showed me any photographs during the course of the case. Okay.
what about the was it just one phase because it was supposed to the attack was supposed to come through the water get in the house and then end up in lake michigan correct that was my understanding of the latest okay how was that supposed to be accomplished do you know how do you, how do you mean sir? well we, we we've talked about the i guess the first phase of the amphibious yep. then we have the assault the extraction how is the second phase supposed to be completed how are they going to get from the governor's house to lake michigan that i, I don't know that was never discussed was it yes sir. Okay. The um, signal car, yes. Mr. Higgins, Mr. Franks, and Mr. Garbins were in the signal car, correct? Sure. Okay. And in the spotter car, that was Mr. Fox, uh, uh, CHS Dan. Yes, sir. Undercover Red. Yes, sir. Croft. Yes, sir. And uh, Steve Robeson, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Would it be fair for the jury to understand that the lookout car was not originally planned. I think the original plan was two cars, yes. Two cars, okay. Because of the size of the nulls, no offense gentlemen. Uh, there were supposed to be two cars on this trip, not three, correct? Correct? Uh, yes, the original. Okay. And so you were in a position where you had to absorb the nulls in your car, correct? At the request of Mr. Fox. Yes. Do you understand? I, I think so. They didn't fit in the other two cars, so therefore they, you needed a third car to take them around, yes? Sure. Okay. Yes. So if the original plan, if the original plan is for two cars, that would be the signal car and the spotter car. The lookout car was an added, was an added car because they couldn't fit in the original two cars, correct? I think Mr. Fox had more people willing to attend the surveillance okay. than the original plan. But if they were only to be in two cars, that leaves out the lookout car, correct? Because the original two cars were going to be the spotter and the signal car. I don't, How, I don't know if I agree with that. Sir. Okay. Well, which of the cars, which of the signal, the spotter cars were to be the lookout cars if there were only supposed to be two cars? I, I don't think that was ever discussed. It was no, never discussed, discussed, right? Yes. Because the original job was signal and spotter, and that was that. That wasn't discussed at the time I learned about the two cars. It was decided in the parking lot at Anbeth that the Mole Brothers couldn't fit in the cars, in the spotter car or the other car, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. There were too many participants right. to fit in two cars. Well, Fox said that they couldn't fit. Do you mind, Mark, taking the nulls? And you said yes, right? Yes. Okay, because it was your car. Right? Yes. Okay. In fact, you're the one who were given the radio. Who gave you the radios? Uh, was that was that CHS Dan who gave you the radios? Or was that uh, Undercover Red who gave you the radios? I don't specifically recall who handed me the radio. Okay. Well, it wasn't the Knoll Brothers because they were already in the car, right? True. Okay. So somebody provided you with those radios, yeah? Correct. Okay. And it was your car? Yes, sir. Okay. Your car didn't have a tracker on it, did it? No, sir. Okay. So for purposes and for the jury's understanding, the other two cars, everybody knew where those went, correct? Because they had trackers or they had some form of GPS location on them or no? I, that I don't know. You don't know. Fair enough. But your car didn't have any specific GPS or tracking on it, right? My understanding is the GPS data from my phone didn't, didn't pull for whatever reason. Okay. Because the original plan that night was that the nulls were supposed to be in your car. That's why it was never tracked as a third car as part of this operation. Correct? No, no, sir. Okay. So just for the jury's understanding today, there is no evidence, there is no tracking, there is nothing to say where you drove that night 
by scientific evidence, correct? By scientific evidence, that's correct. Okay. We just have your word. And the recordings, yes, sir. And the recordings. Where I okay. mentioned going past the okay. governor's road. Right. Now, and, and we didn't see it out there, and, and I understand, but when you had asked the Knowles if they wanted to go down to see the governor's house, they said no, right? Correct? I'm going to object on computer and testimony. No, I'm asking you. You get that part that was not played. Right, that part that was not played. Well, I'm just asking the witness a question. You asked the Knowles. I'm sorry, Jeff. Let's restate the question. We'll go. You asked the Knowles if they wanted to go by and see the governor's house, yes or no? I don't recall. You don't recall? No. Okay. Would that have been something you would have asked? I, I don't think so. My, okay. my instructions were not to go down that road. Okay. Did, but that wasn't my question was, did you ever offer to the Knowles, would you like to go down or drive by the governor's home, yes or no? No. Are you certain about what you're testifying to here right now? No, sir. You're not certain about it? I'm not certain whether I said that or not, but I don't believe I did. No. Okay. You did review the recordings before I, coming in here? I did. Okay. What about the bridge? Didn't you identify the bridge that was supposed to be blown up with the nulls? Didn't you say, hey, by the way, there's the bridge? Did you ever bring that up in conversation with the nulls? I don't recall, I may have. Okay, and their response, my, uh, Bill Knowles' response was, I, I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't see any bridge. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And you're telling us today you've reviewed all these recordings before coming in here? Yes, sir. Okay. But just have a moment. You had testified that the surveillance didn't begin until after leaving the AMVET parking lot, correct? Correct. In fact, I think you testified before that the ride from Luther to the AMVET, that was not part of the surveillance, yes. correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. And you had indicated that you were tasked um, by Mr. Fox to uh, be a lookout, correct? Correct. Okay. If I were to say it was CH, CHS, Confidential Human Source, Dan who tasked you, how would you respond to that? If you want me to ask the question again, I will. Yes, please. Did Fox or CHS Dan task you with your lookout assignment? Fox. Fox. Yes, sir. Are you certain of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Everything's being recorded. Yes, sir. You, you understand that, right? Yes, sir. And you understand who Dan is. I'm not going to use his last name, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Did CHS Dan ever task you with what to do that night? Potentially, yes, sir. What do you mean now? What's poten potentially right. meaning what? Yeah, he may have. Okay. He may have. Yes. Okay. Did CHS Dan task you with in your car with lookout responsibilities, yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. So we have Fox tasking you. Okay. And now we have a, a confidential human source employed by the FBI to task you, correct? Correct. Okay. Do 
why is Dan, a confidential informant, tasking your car? My understanding is doing it the best at the behest of Mr. Fox. Okay. But if you just got the task from Mr. Fox, why is Dan now telling you what to do after you get the instruction from Mr. Fox? I don't know. It's not the job of a confidential human source to provide information for tasking on a surveillance, is it? It might be. That would kind of be kind of helping out the situation, wouldn't it, from a confidential human source employed by the FBI? Well, again, similar to what I was saying, uh, he, he's got a, uh, let me rephrase that. Um, he might to maintain his bona fides, uh, to maintain this, the legend that he has been operating under, he may. Okay. But he was the last person who tasked your vehicle. And, I, and I'm saying this specifically, it was first Fox and then Dan had passed, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you not understand the, the original test by Mr. Fox, that Dan had to step in and give you instructions? Did you repeat the question? Did you not, you were tasked by Mr. Fox, correct? Correct. Did you understand that task? I did. Why is then Dan now tasking you guys if you understood the task from Mr. Fox? I don't know. Is it possible Fox didn't task you guys? It was CHS Dan who did that? No, sir. Okay. So if I understand your testimony correctly, uh, an informant for the FBI is tasking the individ individuals in your car, Mike Dahl, Bill Dahl, and you with surveilling recon as part of this plan. Doing the lookout. Okay, so you're being tasked by an informant. Yes, sir. Okay. The Knowles never provided the radios, correct? They did not provide the radios. They didn't offer their personal cell phones for purposes of this recon, correct? Mm, no. Do you know what I mean by I, that? I don't. Because at some point in time, the radios weren't working, correct? Correct. Okay. In fact, there was some discussion that the radios would go out of uh, range after about two or three miles, correct? Correct. Okay. And is this before or after you left the, the AMVET parking lot? I think I discovered it before. Beforehand. Yes, okay. In fact, you make a, in fact, you contact Adam Fox via your cell phone on a wire chat saying, what comms don't seem to be working. If you need to get a hold of me, contact you on your cell phone, correct? Yes. He was not contacting the Knoll brothers on any devices at that point in time because the comms were down, correct? He was not. Okay. Correct. So now you're coordinating with Mr. Fox relative to this recon and surveillance, correct? Yes. You are an FBI agent. I am. Okay. So you're driving. They didn't give you any gas money, did they? No. Okay. They didn't. Um, thank you, Judge. The Knowles didn't tell you Excuse me, the question of gas. The Knowles yes. didn't give you any gas money, right? They did not. Okay. And they didn't, like, tell you where to drive, did they? No. Okay. So you were the one who was driving in the area, correct? I was behind the wheel, yes, sir. Okay. And did CHS Dan task you with the area you were to drive in? No. Okay. But the Knoll brothers weren't asking you, drive around the lane. They never said that, did they? They did not say that. Okay. And they didn't say drive past your house, did they? That was part of the tasking that we received. But they didn't oh, yeah. ask you since you were driving to drive by the house, correct? They, they didn't ask me. Okay. And they didn't say, we'd like to see the boat launch. You did, they didn't ask you to drive by the boat launch, did they? Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, they didn't ask you to drive by any critical points relative to this plan to attack and kidnap the governor, did they? That wasn't the tasking that we were given. Okay, I, I understand that, but they didn't like volunteer as being participants in this to tell you an FBI agent undercover at the time what to do, did they? No, sir. Okay. They didn't have any nighttime binoculars, did they? No, sir. Daytime binoculars. No, sir. And the reason I'm saying nighttime binoculars, 
um, it, it, it gets dark out at night, doesn't it? It's almost pitch black in certain areas, isn't it? It's, okay. And so relative to cars, seeing cars, how are you even able to identify cars if it's like pitch black? How would you know the difference between a sheriff's car and a, you know, someone driving home from work that night? How would you know the difference? Headlights. Uh, Headlights? Whether the, the car has lights on it, the light package. Well, I would assume all cars have lights on it driving in pitch uh, black. On top. Oh, on the top? Red wax. Okay. The emergency vehicle. Okay. Package. But it was, it was pitch black. We've seen some pictures and it, it was pitch black that it was, night. It was very dark. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know where you drove that night? The general vicinity? Yes. The general vicinity. Tell, tell the jury what that means. What's the general vicinity? Sure. What does that mean? Uh, we would have left the Easy Mark parking lot. And I don't mean to interrupt, but you, you, you preface things we would have left. I'm sorry. Oh, and, and, I, and I and forgive me for interrupting, but every time you say that, I, I get concerned, okay? Go ahead, please continue. In this instance, what I meant was the Null Brothers and I would have left the Easy Mark parking lot. Uh, as I talked about on direct, we would have driven around Elk Rapids generally until we got a signal from one of the other vehicles to begin surveilling. Uh, I would have driven out along 31, turned on to Williams, turned pa went past Timberlake, driven in that area. I turned around at one point in a tennis court area, which I think is off Carnes or Carn. I may be mispronouncing it, probably am. Yeah. Uh, headed back towards the governor's roadway, uh, and then we're in that area of Williams, Birch Lake, uh, Timber Lake Drive, and 31, and that's what I mean by general facility. Can you tell the jury how many times at night that you had been in that general vicinity before the night or the early morning hours of September 13th? I had not been there before. So when you say general vicinity, you're not even familiar with the roads or the area, are you? After, look at the time? At the time? No, sir. Okay. Right. So, and it's really hard to see Birch Lake from the roadway, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you ever see the lake from the roadway at all? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so you didn't know this area at all because you'd never been up there at night specifically trying to scope out the area as an FBI agent to see where you're at, right? I, I didn't know that area at all, sir. Okay. So when you say general vicinity, that's... I think I was in the area. I, I don't know if I was in the area. Wouldn't that be a more accurate statement? No, sir. Okay. You were driving around for 45 minutes or so? Yes, sir. Okay. So you weren't stationed at either the boat launch, where the spotter car was, where the signal car was, to provide any type of backup. In other words, communicating to another car. I see law enforcement, I see a couple of cars. You didn't do any of that, did you? In other words, you weren't in the the vicinity, the the, the, the near proximity of the spotter car or the um, other car, correct? You weren't like down the block or at least even a half mile away, were you? Yes, I I'm not trying to nitpick with you, but general vicinity is, or vicinity, near vicinity. Uh, we were in the area, but you're right. We weren't on the same block. Yeah. What's the closest you get to the spotter car that night? If you know. We would have passed the, the drive as they were going down it. So uh, that's the, the signal car. The spotter car, um, several hundred yards probably. Okay. At some point. Did you see the spotter car? They had their lights on. I did. You, I'm sorry, you I saw did. it? Okay. Is that on any of your radio traffic? Your, any of your recordings that, hey, I see the spotter car? None of that's on your radio traffic, is it? I don't believe so. No, okay. Okay. In other words, hey, spotter car, we got your backup. I saw the taillights. None of that, for purposes of recon, is is recorded by you, is it? That's correct. Okay. And same with the signal car. No, there's okay. no... There's nothing regarding warning or we got your back or there's no cars in the area, you and the Knowles never communicated to either the spotter or the signal car regarding anything going on, even Coast is Clear, right? Correct, there was nothing going on. Okay, but you didn't even communicate Coast is Clear, or the Knowles didn't communicate Coast is Clear, right? That's correct. Okay. 
Didn't you hand the radio to Bill Knoll and tell him how to respond on the radio? Correct. Yes, sir. He didn't even know how to use the radio, correct? He was having a problem using it? I don't remember having that. Okay. Having a problem using Where are those radios today? That I don't know, sir. You, you have no idea? Yes, sir. So radios used in a recon mission to kidnap the governor. You're telling a jury you have no idea where these radios are today as we sit here in trial. That wouldn't be part of my responsibility. Okay. Either. Well, who did you give them to after the mission? I would have returned them to the, the whether it was CHS Red or Dan, CHS, I mean, CHS, UC Red or CHS Dan, they would have gone, or Mr. Fox, it would have gone back in those. But conference. you have no idea. You're sure. telling us today you have no idea. I would have returned it to the folks that were in the spotter car. Well, you, you used that phrase, you would have. I did. You did? Yes, I did. Okay. And when did you do that? The, during the debrief portion okay. of the debrief. Is any of that covered or recorded on any of your recordings, yes or no? Yes. Here are, you, here are the radios? I don't know if I said that. But here are the comms? I don't know if it, it would have captured me physically, it would not have captured me physically returning the radios. Even um, thanks, here are the radios that you guys provided us? None of that exists on any recording, does it, sir? I don't know that one way or the other, sir. About how many miles in this 45 minutes did you drive? You know, folks, sometimes when they go out for a drive, they'll look at a speedometer and they'll think, oh, I realize I drove 20 miles or 40 miles or 60 miles. Please tell the jury on this really important mission how many miles you drove during that 45 minute period. Ten. How do you know that? I'm estimating our, our speed at the time and estimating it over 45 minutes. You never checked your speedometer, did you? I would have been within I mean, the, the, the mileage meter. I, I did not check the other okay. You nor the Knowles were taking field notes regarding the operation that night, correct? Correct. Field notes being, please explain to the jury. Uh, notes of observation. Okay. Do you remember that during your ride that Bill Moll had said uh, he didn't know where he was going, they just dropped it on me, I was just going for a ride, do you remember that? Your Honor, I just want to know that just that you were saying, I let it go a little bit earlier, but the, uh, the statements counsel is trying to introduce are hearsay statements, and, uh, and it's a way really to try to get uh, the attorney's
the record can reflect the jury's out of courtroom. Um, I would say in front of them that the, the objection will be sustained. Uh, any such statements will be left out of the question um, because it uh, obviously introduces that uh, your six statements to the jury. So, uh, even if it's not adopted by the jury. So, uh, anything before uh, we take a short break, Mr. Jobs, Mr. Carlson? No, sir. Mr. Matthew? No, thank you. Mr. Sack? No, thank you. Mr. Barnett? No, thank Okay, let's take a short uh, five minute break. And we'll come back. Go ahead, I'm going to protect Mark here.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first thing, uh, we got your note in yesterday. The uh, second part of it is uh, the recall that was an objection before I excuse you. Uh, that was sustained by the court uh, until the jury of disregard of the question during the time. So now, Bill, let me go back to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I didn't ask, can I call you Asian? Is that okay? This okay. Just don't call you late for dinner as uh, I would usually say to my mom. So, um, I had used the time frame before 45 minutes from the end that to the, to the debriefing. And, and I apologize for that because I, you know, we timestamped everything I, I have from, and this is a question from after you leave and that 1124, you return at 1157. Would that be more accurate? Because that's, that's about a half hour, isn't it? Yes, sir. Would that be more accurate than the 45 minutes? Probably, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, during the, you know, this surveillance period of time, would you agree, because you've reviewed your uh, recordings, that the word cop is used eight times. Would that be fair? I didn't count that. You didn't sir. count? No. Okay. Um, in fact, would you agree that the last reference to a police officer is at 10.30 p.m.? Would you agree with that? I, I, I wouldn't know, sir. You, you don't know? I didn't review okay. that according to that, no, sir. Uh, in fact, the word law enforcement, based on your recordings, is never mentioned in any of these recordings, correct, in, in your recordings? regarding the surveillance. Would that be accurate or not accurate? The word law enforcement. In other words, look out for law enforcement. That word is not in there, is it? Law enforcement. I, it would not surprise me if that is correct, sir. I, okay. I don't know one way or the other, but, but 
it okay. seems like a pretty awkward term to you. So yes, I, I okay. doubt it's there. Okay. In fact, the word Michigan State Police is not used in any recording for purposes of looking out for Michigan State Police, correct? I'd ex if, if that's what you're telling me, sir, I'd accept that representation. Yes, sir. But you're the one testifying, and I don't know. I I, I, and, I, and I respect your, your statement, but I'm asking you. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, yes, sir. Because I don't State. want the jury walking away thinking, well, the lawyer said that, and the lawyer's statements aren't questions because the judge is going to get instruction, you know, saying, I. I my questions to you aren't evidence. The word Michigan State Police is not used in the recordings, correct? Correct. Okay. The word sheriff, the word sheriff, for purposes of tasking, looking for sheriff's department, the word sheriff is not mentioned, correct? Correct. The word suspicious is used by you. Yes, sir. And only you, correct? That I didn't review the recordings to okay. see who said suspicious. In fact, there was some laughter about some vehicle passing, correct? And you were like, well, oh, I, I know what I'm doing. I look suspicious. Do you recall making that statement? No, sir. Okay. So, but you made but you made the statement suspicious. I, I recall saying that it looked suspicious or looked, okay. for lack of a better term, funky. Uh, in, which I guess suspicious is a better term. Uh, suspicious sitting in that parking lot to abreast. Okay. But you are the author of the statement suspicious or the word suspicious, correct? I, I use that word. Okay. So for purposes of tasking, either Adam Fox or CHS Dan, they do not use the word suspicious vehicle or suspicious, correct? That, that I couldn't tell you, sir. Okay. I don't recall. You don't recall? No, sir. Okay. Because it, it, that would have been recorded, and if there was a recording of that... Right. I didn't, I didn't review the recordings for the word suspicious. Okay. Okay. Kind of a big word in a surveillance. Would you agree? Suspicious? Yes or no? Looking out for suspicious vehicles? I, I don't know if I understand. A big word? Yeah. Well, when you're talking recon and surveillance, you know, looking out for suspicious vehicles would kind of be like one of the major things of a lookout, right? Sure. But there are different ways to say suspicious uh, that. But you can't tell us today whether or not you were tasked with, either by Adam Fox or CHS Dan, to look out for suspicious vehicles, can you? Are you saying, did either of you use the word suspicious? Yes, sir. I, I cannot tell you. You can't tell me. Correct. Oh. The term county is only used five times, yes, during the surveillance period or during the ride up and the ride back? Uh, I didn't review my recordings to see how many times the word county is used. Sir. Okay. In fact, Franklin County is referenced twice. Yes or no? I don't know, sir. Uh, Montcalm County, south of here, is referenced uh, only three times, correct? I, I don't know, sir. Okay. The word signal is never mentioned or never recorded by you, correct? The word signal. is never mentioned by me? That, that's correct. That's correct. And it's not in any of your recordings, signal car? The use of the word signal car? No, sir. I would okay. not have said signal. That is not in the recordings, correct? Correct. Okay. The word lookout is not used or not in your recordings. Actually, it's a compound question. The word lookout is not used, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, and it's not in your recordings, correct? Correct. Other words were used to indicate lookout. Okay. But the word lookout is not used. Correct. Okay. The word trooper, as in state trooper, Michigan state trooper, the word trooper is not used, correct? Sir, I did not review the recordings to see how many times, if okay. ever, I used the word trooper. Okay. I'm asking, was the word trooper ever used at all? I, not, I, I don't know. So. Okay, fair enough.
the route that night regarding what you have described as the surveillance, you're the one who picked that route, correct? You're the one who determined the route, yes or not? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. While you were with the Knowles, there was no future talk about recons or surveillance to be conducted in the future, correct? True. Correct. Thank you for your testimony, Agent. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I yield the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barnett will be next for cross-examination. I, I think what we're going to do uh, is So what we're going to do uh, in accordance with the request is take a little bit longer today. Uh, so we'll go until 2 o'clock for lunch. Uh, the food will be delivered to you all um, as uh, we take the order. And then we'll see everybody back at 2 o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Everyone, be seated. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Nice uh, uh, we'll have a nice lunch. We'll call the Commissioner of Marshall Stuff at the time. And we'll call the Cross Foundation. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Good afternoon. Fun, sir. How are you? Very good. Can I refer to you as agent? Yes, sir. All righty. Thank you. Um, Agent, uh, how many times have you testified in these these cases without saying where, or whatever uh, level? Five times. Five times. Okay. And uh, you said you listened to your tapes before today. Yes. And when did you do that? Uh, through the course of the last few years, over the course of those uh, times that I've testified, sir, prior to testifying on multiple occasions. Okay. You read through your testimony that you've given in those five cases as well? Uh, I have. And has your testimony been consistent throughout this case? Yes, sir. And so it should match up today as well? Yes. And are you going by memory today from three years ago, which would be good? Uh, but, or is it more from your recollection and refreshing your memory or both? Both, sir. Okay. So there's, there's things you remember probably very well and others that you need a refresher. That's fair, sir. Yes. And you've looked at, again, police reports probably as well. The reports of the investigation, yes, sir. And are those your reports or other reports? Both, sir. So transcripts, reports, and recordings. Yes, sir. Anything else to uh, prepare you for today? Demonstratives. Uh, but that would be about it. Yeah, I think we've covered most of it. Okay. So anytime you're out in the field, and it looks like you do a couple different jobs, but you do some undercover work. You are, I'm sure, getting briefed before you go in and briefed after. Yes, sir. So the, typically there's a briefing beforehand, and then uh, there would be a debrief meeting afterwards. Yes, sir. Okay. And you do the debriefing after they brief you before kind of thing, possibly? No, sir. Typically there's a briefing. Uh, I'll go do the meet, and then the, the debriefing, which is mostly me telling them what transpired during the meeting. Okay, maybe vice versa before that? Before there, the, there may be some what to expect from the case agents prior to prior to the undercover meeting, yes, sir. Okay, and you indicated there's this is dangerous work at, yes, time, at times. Yes, sir. And, they, and that the crimes are, there's physical danger for you. Can be, yes, sir. And, and uh, it would be dangerous for anyone to be around these people that you work work with. Depending on who it is, yes, sir. In this case, that's, I think, what you testified about, though, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, then they're so dangerous, you have to play along with them. I don't know if I agree with the term play along, but uh, I have to develop a legend, like I talked about on direct. Okay. And actually, all these guys, all people have legends, don't they? There's life story. I guess that's a way of looking at it, sure, yeah. Whether it's true or... A false legend, right? That's one way of looking at it, yes, sir. And some people have a, a false legend that uh, they use as their true legend, probably, right? I'm not sure I understand your question, sir. I'll move along. So, Dan, uh, Dan would also be in the position that you were, as far as I call it, playing along, or? I mean, he's acting 
I'm not sure I understand your question, sir. Position, how, how are you saying he's in the same position I am? Well, he has to, I, I'll use my words, play along uh, for his own protection. He is not telling people that he, he is working with the FBI. That's correct. He, he has to fit that legend as well, doesn't he? Y yes, sir. And part of the legend would not be, hey, I'm going to the police or I'm nervous about this and or I can't be trusted, any of those type, types of things, right? Well, yeah, yes, sir. The, well, the, your legend, a legend, wouldn't be very useful if, if you were not trusted, correct? Okay. So anybody that's rubbing up next to Adam Fox, for example, he's in a tight spot for his safety, isn't he? He or she? Adam Fox was a dangerous individual, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So you'd want to not raise suspicion to yourself if you had to be with him, you or any citizen. Any person that's working in conjunction with the FBI? Yeah. Yes, sir. How about any citizen that's just maybe hearing him spouting off some of his crazy ideas and they're standing right there? Are they in immediate physical danger? Is that what you're asking me? If they don't go along, if they don't say the right thing, if they act inappropriately, that puts them at a suspicious level? Sure, yes. Yeah. All right. And you, you indicated that you stay in contact with these people. Mr. That, Fox? Yeah, that's part of your, your job generally, isn't it? Yes. You don't just drop off the side of the earth after meeting them until maybe you're done with your investigation and they're right, ready for an arrest. So the invest, as long as the investigate, or as long as the undercover operation is going on. So yes. it's, it's real important to stay in touch with them as, as it moves along and continue that contact. It, it would be part of what I'm doing as an undercover, yes, sir. Absolutely. And you did that with Mr. Fox. I did. And you have training. You went to a multi-week training. Correct. Yes, sir. See, you have an advantage over regular citizens that are maybe in the same spot that we just talked about getting a little too close for comfort with some of these guys. I, I, again, sir, I'm not sure what you mean by regular citizens. Um, People uh, without oh, training. I, I'm having trouble envisioning the scenario that you're you're trying to get me, so I, I, I apologize. But Okay. But without your training, you could imagine how hard it would be for someone else that's not had that training and they get put in the same spot and they realize, holy, holy crud, this guy's Well, I think a, a, a regular, no, sir, a regular person could extricate themselves from that. Uh, they could they could get out. They, they don't have to uh, maintain contact with somebody like Adam because uh, they can go away and never contact Adam again, whereas I'm trying to conduct a be part of an investigation into his activities, and I can't as easily go away for the purposes of the investigation. Right, wouldn't that draw suspicion and run off the side of the earth? No, sir. Perry, you don't no. think so? No, sir. So your, your part started because Detroit contacted you. Correct. They had heard from one of the undercover online people, which was your fake girlfriend, and eventually, uh, so no, sir. Uh, they had heard from, I believe, CHS Dan had reported that uh, Mr. Fox had made some statements uh, that were concerning about okay. violent action directed at the state legislature. So there was an un online undercover, though. Like, there, there was. That's true. Yes, sir. I think you said it was a female. Yes, sir. And that person then reached out to Amanda Keller. Uh, she had already been in touch with Amanda Keller. But yes, sir. And you were to be the imaginary boyfriend or the proposed boyfriend of uh, imaginary online undercover? The OCE's boyfriend, yes, sir. Okay. So you met Mr. Fox on 7-3? I did. And within eight days, you're at Wisconsin? Yes, sir. You already gained trust with him from him? Yes, sir. You were invited by 8-1, 20-something days later. You're in Bellevue with Mr. Fix? Yes, sir. And you're at Luther by 9-12 and 9-13? Correct. And you're in the back shack pretty soon right after that, or where was that? No, sir, that was the 
uh, the July third meeting, my initial meeting. With okay. Fox. So that was what that was your first meeting was in the uh, basement <coughs> of the vac vacuum cleaner repair shop. Yes, sir. And that that was your first meeting overall. He took you right downstairs. Yes, sir. Okay. Not a lot of operation security there, though, was there? I, I disagree with you on that. I'm, what I'm saying is he just meets you. He has a little relationship, and he's already got you downstairs, was my point. Not necessarily taking your phone away. I was trying to explain my prior question to see if he had a different answer. He disagreed with me. No, sir. And originally, there was a uh, talk about legislators and the police and doing something to those people, right? Talk about doing something to the legislatures, yeah. legislators, excuse me. Yes. Okay. You said, I think, police as well, but was it just the legislators? So Adam had talked about police, and if they got in, he was not going to go out and kill police indiscriminately, but if they got in the way of his plan, he would be willing to kill police officers. Okay. Yes, sir. So there were, were police officers. Anybody not falling in line with his plan was in danger. I, I think when he was talking about kidnapping these state legislators, yes, uh, if there, there were armed resistance, yes, he planned to take, plan to kill. Okay. This was the same gentleman that went into the Capitol with his gun on April 30th of the, the same year, right? I believe so. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I believe based on my background briefing that that was something that was mentioned to me. Yes, okay. Sir. And if he were so dangerous, can you explain why the FBI wouldn't have arrested him on April 30th and or at least stopped him from going in to have contact in the same presence as legislators, the state police as well? I don't know if he had committed a federal crime at that point, sir. So you, you went to, uh, how did you get to Cambria, Wisconsin? I, I drove. Okay. I forgot to ask one question. Mr. Fox, he's not a keyboard warrior, so to speak. Pardon me, sir? He's not a keyboard warrior, the kind of guy that just writes some stuff and that doesn't follow through and is just, you know, blowing steam. I, I thought Mr. Fox was serious. Yes, sir. Okay. So you, you drove yourself to um, Wisconsin, and yeah. that was on July 11th. I did. Did you meet Steve Robeson there? I did. Were you aware who organized the event? I was not. They didn't tell you who organized the event that you're going to as part of your, your briefing before? Uh, I, I know Mr. Robeson was involved uh, in, the, in the organization but of the event, I, I don't recall, no, sir. Which group put it on? Would it possibly be his, I'll call it militia? Uh, possibly. He was the commander, was he not? That I don't know, sir. They didn't brief you on whether he's a commander? Correct, they did not. They didn't brief you on who, what militia was doing this? Correct, uh, not that I recall. They didn't brief you on who the organizer of the event was, right? Uh, it, they may have told me Steve Roberson has was put into the the uh, the event together. I'm trying to remember whether that was whether he was the property owner or uh, the, yes, the, he was involved in the organization. I believe that. Yes. Okay. He was kind of running the show. From your observation point. From my observations, uh, he was involved in the organization of the event. Yes, sir. Okay, but you indicated earlier to Mr. Nunzio, I believe, uh, that you weren't sure who the property owner was. That's correct, sir. That, in fact, you were invited, introduced to a property owner. I was. And that person wasn't Steve Robeson. It was not. You know Steve Robeson from uh, his undercover informant work. I, 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 I was aware he was a confidential human source with the FBI, yes. And you were aware of his violations of his ad admonitions? No. They didn't brief you that he had at least three weapons in his 
possession sometime during this case? During the pendency of the case? No, sir. I think I heard about that uh, following the, the undercover operation ending. I, they, I did hear about that following the undercover okay. operation ending. They didn't warn you about that and brief you that, hey, watch out for this guy? They did not. Did they tell you Steve Robinson's going to be there, Roby? Yes, sir. Did uh, did you see Dan there? I did. Did Dan know you were undercover? He did not. Did you know Dan was undercover? I knew he was a confidential human source, yes, sir. Were there other uh, informants or undercover agents there besides you two? Yes, sir. And did, did Dan bring anyone with him? Did you see Yes, that? sir. Who did he bring with him? Members of the Wolverine Watchmen. Okay. Were they, were they supposed to be invited by Steve Robeson or whomever was putting this on? That I do not know, sir. You don't know that they weren't supposed to be there? I, I assume they were supposed to be there because it didn't seem to be a problem, but I don't know who invited uh, the Wolverine Watchmen. Do you remember which Wolverine Watchmen were there? Yes, sir. Uh, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris, Ty Garbin, Paul Beller, and uh, Brandon Kassar. Barry Croft there? He was. How did he get there? I don't know, sir. He didn't come with Jenny P. Uh, I, I know who you're referring to. I don't know whether, he, I know they traveled together. I don't know whether he drove there or she drove there or how he arrived. Okay. Did you know anything about a firearm between Jenny P and Barry? No, sir. Jenny P and Steve Robeson? No, sir. And what kind of vehicle did Dan come in, if you know? Uh, I believe an SUV. Is that what he fit all the, those names in his vehicle? I'm not sure if each one of those attendees traveled with Dan. The majority of them certainly did. At one point or another, I saw them in or around the SUV. Did you see Steve Robeson uh, talking to other people there? Yes. Were you privy to those discussions? No. You weren't privy to any discussion with Barry Croft? When you say privy to any discussions with Barry Croft, what do you mean, sir? Were you listening to any conversations Barry Croft had or was involved in? Yes. And were any of those involving Steve? I don't recall, sir. Were any of those regarding targets? When you say targets? Well, the targets before it sounded like were the legislators. I don't recall any discussion. I, I was not aware of any conversations between Barry Croft and Mr. Roberson about targets. How about boats? Boat, did again, did uh, the boats come up? Did you hear anything about that? No. You haven't heard about boats at all today? That's not what I'm saying, sir. You asked me, or I thought you were asking me if boats came up at Cambria. They did well, not. I apologize. I didn't mean to mis misstate something. So it didn't come up at Cambria. Boats did not come up at Cambria, yes, sir. That's that, correct. When did that come up? The first time I was aware of a uh, plan involving boats would have been August 1st, uh, 2020. Okay. So what activities did you have between 7 11, July 11th, mm -hmm. and 8 1? I would have remained in contact with Mr. Fox by wire, but that would have been my next in-person meeting with him. Okay, and it was important for you to do that, to keep your relationship going? To, to stay in contact with him? Yes, sir. Yeah, and to monitor what he's doing. Yes, sir. Make sure he's not gonna do something crazy, crazy. D yes, sir. Something beyond just talk. If something was imminent, yes, that's correct. So you said you heard again about the boats on 8, eight what date in August? 8 one. Thank you. So that was at the Bellevue meeting with Fix? Yes, sir. And who else was there? Fix, Fox, Keller, uh, Mr. Fix's wife or girlfriend. Okay. And who was the proponent of the, the boat idea? I'm trying to think who first said boat uh, at that meeting. It, it would have been Mr. Fix or Mr. Fox. Okay. And it, that was a different target than what might have been talked about before with legislators, right? Correct, yes, sir. 
and or police, how did the watchman go from legislators, we'll say, because I think you were solid with that, to yeah, a different target? I object to the, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I think it mischaracterizes the testimony about the watchman going from heading the plan regarding legislatures to something else that was discussed at this point. Okay. Um, Mr. Barnett, yes. We clearly hear a uh, plan or some talk about legislators, and now we have vote talk. Somewhere in between there, something happened. And I'm just so curious how. Your question is, is he aware of what changed in that interim? I think we get. There was testimony this morning about the, the plan and the targets that we further across and just trying to determine what the, what the, what the heart of the question was. The heart of the question is how did we get from point A to point B or flip the page to a different target? Okay, and uh, you have an objection to that? Yes, sure. my, my objection is specifically, I believe the testimony was that Fox's plan was regarding the legislature, targeting the legislatures, and to develop from there. And the question included the Wolverine Washington's plan being uh, to target legislatures. Okay. Um, that'll be the same uh, as to the party and the originating for the plan, because that is consistent with the testimony as was outlined. So, um, I think we're free to ask uh, another question if you wish about the uh, plan. May I ask who planned the uh, the boat, uh, the target of the boat, which would have been Governor Whitmer? To my knowledge, Mr. Fox, sir. Okay. So Mr. Fox did, in fact, go from legislators to the boat plan. Y yes, sir. And do you know what happened to cause that or when that happened? I don't know what happened to cause that. Um, I think he didn't think the, the original plan was feasible and needed too many people uh, to be involved in that original plan from what yep. He discussed. Oh, I don't want to hear what you think. I appreciate you offering yeah, I'm, your opinion. I'm sorry. Mr. Fox had told me that yeah. he thought the uh, original plan would uh, be too resource intensive, both from a personnel standpoint and from a uh, you know, weapons, people, money standpoint. Okay. And that happened somewhere between 7 11 and 8 1. Yes. And then he was not arrested at that time because he's awfully serious, isn't he? He is serious, yes, sir. And why wasn't he arrested at that point in August? We're continuing to gather evidence about uh, the plot, uh, as well as who other other people who may be involved in the plot. Even though he's highly dangerous and could have just go ahead and do something like this. Yes, sir. We. Uh, yes, yes, sir. All right. So the uh, watchman showed up. Do you know who paid for the trip, for their food, for their room and board? No, sir. You didn't, uh, you didn't get briefed on that? No, sir. And, and you don't know where ground zero was, where this plan became against Governor Whitmer, do you? Ground zero meaning where it flipped or changed yeah. into a kidnapping? I do not, sir. You were told in between 7-3 and 8-1 no, sir. You just heard about it for the first time at Fix's, yes, sir. Fix's place in Bellevue. Thank yes, you. So when you did go to Wisconsin, you participated in training. I did. You did the live fire. I did. And that's shooting. It is. Medical training. Yes, sir. You did, I'll call it weapon stuff. Fair. Yes. <laughs> Weapon manipulation. Uh, yes, sir. All right. So kind of they have weapon classes. That was actually at Luther. Uh, so the, the things that took place at the Cambria were that kind of team shooting with laying down, suppressing fire and seeking cover. Uh, there was a, a general firing line where they did just, just some target practice, the participants of the group, uh, medical training, and then that kill house exercise, the, the room clearing, breaching exercise. Okay. Also known as shoot house. Sure. Yes. Nobody gets killed. 
Hopefully not. Nobody gets shot. Well, no, I think that's the, the, not always true. Not always true. And and the I think the point of the exercise is to assault a building. And if there's a threat, uh, to eliminate that threat. Okay. But this is all, I say playing army, but the, this is all practice and training, right? It's training, yes, sir. These guys like to play army, so to speak. I don't, I wouldn't characterize it that way, no sir. And again, the reason you participated in both of these is because there's danger involved. You can't sit there in a lawn, lawn chair smoking a cigarette with your baseball cap on and sunglasses and not fit in. Correct, I, I can't not participate. Okay. And you've it, would got, be, it would be odd. You've got good, a, skill, a good skill set to, to fit right in. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You can shoot your weapon, you can handle yourself. I'm, I'm fine, yes, sir. And again, the dangers up to and including that fear with these folks. Certainly. And, and if you did sit on that lawn chair, you would arise suspicion if you didn't go along, right? Well, it would arise suspicion it wouldn't allow me to continue to work as an undercover case. Yeah, they probably wouldn't invite me back or they would lose my lose contact with me. Pretty much if the big picture outside, Luther, Wisconsin, kind of the same training things going on, right? Very similar, yes sir. In fact, isn't there a standard or routine or some sort of pretty regular way that the trainings go as far as the militia communities involved? That I'm not sure. It would seem so from, from the, those two events I attended. And are, have you attended training events like that in the past, if you can say? No, sir, I haven't. Those are your, your two first, maybe only experiences? Uh, insofar as it relates to attending field training exercises in an undercover, yes, sir. That's okay. That's correct. And uh, somewhere along the line, you were asked to do surveillance of Mackinac Island. Yes, sir. And that was from Adam Fox. It was. And was that at Wisconsin he said that, or was that somewhere in between? That was the August Belleville meeting. Okay, we're up to 8 1. Yes, sir. Very good. How long did it take for your organizations to get these pictures into Adam's hands? Not long. Uh, would have been several days, you know, a week or two at most. Would it surprise you if August 26th was the date that they were exchanged? It would not surprise me, no, sir. So you said a couple days. What, why well, were you? I'll, I'll change that. I guess it, it took longer to get up to, to Mackinac than I assumed it would. So uh, three weeks. Okay. And you're, you're okay with giving this dangerous guy or your organization, what if you can speak for them? I'm sorry, sir? You're okay to give pictures like that to, to Adam Fox with what you knew? Uh, okay meaning what, sir? That it's uh, not objectionable to do that. No, sir. Again, he had tasked me with that. And as part of my role as the undercover or one of the undercovers in the case, uh, I, I wanted to continue to comply with his taskings, and that was what he had asked me to do. So, yes, sir, there was nothing objectionable about me doing that. In fact, there were pictures all around the house. There's maps. There's locked door uh, gateways. There's yes, in and out, all of that stuff. That would be pretty... Uh, that's pretty extensive, isn't it? I guess I'm having a hard time characterizing pretty extensive. Isn't that pretty extensive and uh, in, in poor common sense to give that kind of information to Mr. No, dangerous sir. Adam Fox? No, sir. So I was wondering, is he really that dangerous now? Was I wondering that? No, sir. I was convinced he was very dangerous. So when did you see Adam after it, August 1st? The Luther FDM, sir. So August 1st going all the way to September 12th and 13th? Correct. How many participants were in that place? I think you said 20. Approximately, yes, sir. Would it, you know, if people signed in in Wisconsin when they went, they get to the front door, they all sign their name, 
And uh, I don't remember signing in in Wisconsin. I do remember signing in at Luther. Okay. Would you agree at least 29 people, not 20, signed in at I'm, Luther? Yes. And maybe more didn't sign in? Yes. So you said 20 people were there. That could be short, which was, it's understandable, right? Yes. There's a lot of trees. Can you do, uh, give us a little outline on this location? Certainly, sir. It's a wooded area. It's uh, very rural, um, pretty hilly, as I remember it. There's a camper home on the acreage. Um, and again, there was three, <coughs> different, uh, three different stations set up. Uh, one was a weapons manipulation station. Uh, one was a, a kill house, shoot house, uh, and the other one was a medical tent. So that's it was several it was several acres, it appears to be. And a lot of trees. A lot of trees, yes, sir. Was there any road or any path or anything going, any road or any path going through? Uh, a dirt road, yes, sir. Okay. Besides that, it's basically woods, isn't it? Yes, sir. You, would you be able to make a drawing of that if I were asked you to just draw the square property if it is square and put where things were that you just talked about? Approximate, uh, an approximate drawing, and I'm also a terrible artist, so I can give it a shot. Renner, would it be, I think I can see some chalk here, would it be uh, possible for the court to allow him just to give us a little sketch? Um, well, why don't we just use the jury for a moment? Um, and he can take whatever time and that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Judge, that's a better idea. Um, why don't we pull up the Google Earth view? Would probably be better. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Barnett, any objection to that, or does anybody else have an objection to that? No. I'm faster. I can take a look at it. I'd rather okay. do it. Can we do that? Uh, yeah, Google Earth or uh, Google. And while we're doing that, uh, you need to copy it. I realize that um, uh, the guys didn't re-swear the witness today. It's not legally required to do it on a daily basis. Quite honestly, I do it more of a ceremonial thing, uh, but I don't know that it would be noticed either way. Um, so, Agent, I guess you understand that you've been under oath the entire time to testify. Yes, sir. Have you testified consistent with that oath? I have. Would any of your answers change uh, knowing that uh, the court and the parties expect you to be under oath? No, no. Okay. Um, again, ceremonial is not legally required. Do any of the parties have uh, any issue with that? None. Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, if the witness can draw it and then go to Google Maps, it would probably be best because putting the map there, um, I'm not sure what he's going to identify the map. I think it's in the map, quite frankly. But if he can do a general outline and then go to a Google Map, then his memory is not necessarily refreshed by a Google Map. I think that's what Mr. Barnett was going after. Um, I thought they meant use the Google Map as. 
Yeah. Did yeah. I understand that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Meaning he wouldn't draw it, they would just simply refer to the Google Map. Is that right? They have no objection to the yes. swearing in process. So they... Okay. This is not the only objection to that. No. It's not really required. I would prefer you draw it because. Well, actually, we got. We've got something that might actually be much more helpful. Oh, okay. uh, that sounded very foreboding, but okay. Curry draws it from his own memory, if possible. Uh, so, our uh, agent, don't look up there for a second. Put it back. You can put it back on the TV. You can put it back on the TV. Do we need all this? No, I'm sorry. This is the part of the Make it by deleting everything out in a few okay. minutes. So that would be possible. Yeah. Let's we'll see what it says on the top part. Um, here, could you move it? You can see yeah, the top. You see that? Yeah. No.
Um, you know, there needs to be a little more board gear on the witness because he was hesitant. He's like, yeah, I can try, you know. And, and what I'm suggesting is, is that the court uh, actually points out it's been three years. Hey, witness, would it help you to see a Google Earth view before you drew that? And I think the witness should be allowed to see that so that, you know, that what he's providing to the jury is as accurate as possible. We object to that. Okay. I don't see yeah, that. Let me go back to where it would be. This, uh, what was the point of having you draw the map? Two, uh, he's going to talk about where he, I don't even want to say it right now in front of uh, the other side. I don't want to give that away, but I think it's not for proof to the court. It has to do with location, location, location. Okay, and uh, the distance is yeah. being. Two places in court. Yeah, absolutely. Then my question would be, how is that hand drawn now? Do I assist anybody in making that determination? Because that would hope it would be somewhat to scale. They could they indicated they could try to bring it in on he's trying to test it in front of the jury, so he's trying. Well, I I understand. I'm not trying to short Mr. Barnett the opportunity if, if it involves, let's say, two locations in the distance. Between them is important, that's fine. It's just uh, a hand. I mean, if you ask me to draw this courthouse from 100 feet above, and then you ask Mr. Nunzio 100 feet above, like the scale is not going to be accurate. I mean, Google Earth exists. So that, that's not, that's the reason why I'm pushing. Yeah, can I make a suggestion? Because I, to lay a proper foundation, he would certainly have to ask the witness in terms of scale. You know, where were you? How, you know, how far away? Yeah, this, this is map accurately reflect the layout. Right, before you review a map, because sure. even reviewing a map may not provide the witness with enough um, foundation to even potentially to answer questions. I'm not suggesting what Mr. Clement should do, but he has to lay at least enough foundation regarding, do you remember the place? Do you remember the position of you know, X, Y, and Z, how far were you from A, B, and C, that kind of thing, for purposes of the witness, being able to recall and answer questions, because if we can't answer those questions, then I, I don't know if he can draw a map, but if he can answer questions and draw a map, there may not be a need to um, review the Google map. So um, there has to be at least a series of foundations before we, we get to that point. And Judge, the rules of evidence allow for a witness uh, uh, to refresh their memory through anything, uh, any item. Uh, I think some inquiry of the witness uh, should be made. But, but if the witness can't remember, then refreshing the witness's memory it is an option for counsel to use with that particular witness and or counsel might choose to move on to another topic. Um, and, and, and then it becomes a dead issue on redirect examination because you can't bring it back up if you can't remember. So, and I'm not suggesting how you do this, it's just remembering something from three years ago is, is confusing, I get it, but if you can remember the general layout, maybe the testimony alone can be sufficient without having to use maps or draw maps. Um, I, I guess the, the course position will, will be this. I, I quite frankly, I'm uh, quite honestly concerned about confusion with this, uh, and um, I, I would allow the witness if he's able to provide a general payout. Uh, but if we get to distances, uh, I'm not going to feel comfortable with that because I, I don't know that anybody could reasonably do that, Mr. Barnett. So if, if, if you determine that it would be better to skip the exercise entirely, uh, given that knowledge from me, then that's up to you. I know, Your Honor. Distances are important. There's, there's a reason for the distance. I understand, but... Uh, then, uh, in the course of mind, the uh, hand-drawn version of it will be confusing, so uh, <clears throat> you, you can ask some certain testimony about that and about distances, uh, that, that is certainly appropriate, uh, but without an accurate way to measure that, uh, and the court feels that there will be confusion. The other thing is there are certain items laid out, uh, such as the shape house, as well as a trigger. Trailer camper. Again, I don't have a problem if, if, if the question is generally the layout of where an item was. So on this piece of paper, if it's that this A is here, B is here, C is here, that's fine. But if the question is going to be on your map, how far is A to C, then it's confusing in the court's opinion because then it's potentially inaccurate. And so 
if we're going to do distances and distances matter, then it needs to be happening. So I, I would agree with the court because then it allows the prosecution to get up to use Google Maps to correct any flaw that I think Mr. Barnett is trying to not distract from the witness, but sure. the, the confusing part is we're going to have one series of um, distances and then we're going to have a, a rehabilitation of the Google Map with another series of. And no person's going to be able to get up on stage. No. Map. So, right. that's and so, so, so if, if it's general layout with questions of where was the shoe house or where was this, that's perfectly fine. If distances are going to be involved, then both are not. Um, that's the problem I have is there's uh, distances are the crux. Okay, yeah, um, and that's fine. Witness can testify as to distance. I guess okay. uh, visual representation that's been described would be appropriate. Can I point out the uh, proposed exhibit on the uh, TV right now, which has been cleaned up, it's been stripped of any uh, indicators? Well, the, the, again, of course, I'm going to take it on what's used, but. Uh, why don't we do this? We can take that down. Uh, UC Mark can stand in the back. Why don't we take five minutes and then we can how out we need think if they need and take a bus from break and then we'll bring the break Yeah. 
that he make a drawing. It doesn't have to have anything with distances. I'm not going to hold them. I just want to see the layout of where it is. Sure. Um, I think that would be maybe a good compromise. Could he at least draw where everything was? Sure. That's fine. I won't hold him to that. I do have, I forgot, I have just a couple questions leading up to the FTX about Walmart. That's fine. Observation. Okay. Uh, Dean going to be asked to generally uh, provide the layout of the FTX at Luther. Uh, 
uh, and the drawing will be referenced for layout purposes only, not for distance. Perfectly well. Okay. And any, notice, any objection to that? Uh, not, not at all. Notice to all council in court. Yeah. Uh, on the redirect, we probably are going to admit a new exhibit, and that will be the Google Earth view that we all saw at the foot of our Yeah, can you send that to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Nam, do you have anything for you? No, thank you. Mr. Uh, no, thank you. Okay, uh, all rise to the jury, and then the cameras can go back to the Hold on. So we can bring in. I'm going to see if I have to mark the show. No, that's not. So do we have markers or not? I do. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, that's not. Okay. I don't know. Uh, everybody's in the back. Okay, uh, the witness can come back in the room. Yeah. Yeah. You can bring it back. If you put together. No, really. Okay. Uh, so we have a Good idea to put it sideways. Thank you. You get an extra credit for that. Excellent. Mark, thanks for doing that. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. We appreciate your willingness to uh, do your best. I may might ask at this time if you could use your phone and laser pointer yes, sir. and give us the, uh, the once over, if you wouldn't mind, of what you've come up with. I know that you've turn sideways what might be sort of a paste poster board but it's paper we've used a mark magic marker it looks black from here yes sir uh, and once again i apologize to well, everybody ah uh, so this is a dirt road running from from a road a main road or a main arterial out here uh dirt road runs to some parking which i've indicated with a key 
Um, then there was a further path or road up further into the campsite uh, to the trailer home, which I indicated with T. Uh, there was a kill house or shoot house set up here that I indicated with a K. Uh, this is the weapons manipulation station that I talked about on direct a little bit this morning. Uh, and then this is the medical station that was uh, put up uh, where the medical training was taking place generally uh, there at Luther. Okay, this is, you're not drawing Wisconsin there, this is with Luther, right? That's correct, yes sir. Can I have just a moment, Your Honor? Mark, Mark uh, stay twisted back there with your uh, pointer. Yes, stay back your head back there. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the video. I was going to just point out if the uh, council or anyone else needs to be able to see it. That's what it's Thank you. Let's try to speak up a little. Yes, sir. Not me. Not you. It would be me. This again, as a uh, lower left hand corner is what I'll just approximate it, it as. Weapons manipulation station. Okay. You're sure that it wasn't over in there or I am. And this up here for now is medical tent and medical station. Okay. And is this road that has a P in the middle which looks like parking go all the way past this? The path kind of peters out as it uh, goes further up the hill. Okay. But yes, it does. Trailer? No, sir, that's the kill house. Oh, okay. So trailer right here is yes, P of the K. Correct. Right, letters like I do, which is all right. Uh, T over there, what I would call the shooting house right there, but you've got a K on it, so we'll go with that. Is that what was in the, uh, your recollection of what everything was? The, uh, I, don't, I hesitate to even call it structure, but yes, uh, that's certainly a structure for, for trailer home, but yes, the, the points of... Do you recall anything you know, hooked up to the trailer? Like what, sir? Any uh, any apparatus whatsoever, or next to the trailer? There may have been a generator uh, next to the trailer, or, or something providing power. Uh, What's between the trip? I'll call it trailer. It's actually camper trailer, whatever. Uh, in between that and the shoot house. Space, open, open space. Uh, this, this mostly is, this mostly is, I know we talked about that being a wooden area, but this is mostly open space. Okay. But isn't that, isn't there a hill directly between the shoot house and the trailer camper? There's a hill that starts here, continues on up, and levels out here. And then the, the weapons manipulation station would have also been above. Okay. You just said it was flat up there, and it was all flat, or at least open. Was it open, what you I said? It was open, not Thank flat. You. My mistake. And uh, so there is a hill that falls between the trailer and the, what you call, kill house. There's a grade. Uh, a hill, to me, is more significant than what was present there. So I, I, it isn't okay. grayed up. There you go. Yes. That works. Is it possible that the shoot house and the trailer are in the wrong place here, that the... Uh... No, sir. The roads are in the wrong place? No, sir. Can you show me? So you have a trailer, camper, shoot house, weapons, manipulation? Yes, sir. And medical? Yes, sir. And that's where you're putting that stuff? That is. And the two track, is that the road that goes to the parking? That, the, here's the road that goes to the parking, yes. It's a dirt road. Uh, that runs to a, On the other side, of the sorry. Uh, there's all these items on the lower side. I'm not sure which way that is, but on the other side of the path, what goes there? Can you point to where you're trying to this? This area up here on top, where you have woods. Woods. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good.
Okay. Possibly a canopy with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff, people's tables, things like that. Yes. Next to the trailer. Yes. Does that ring a bell? It does. Okay. Would, you, would it make sense to put that over even though you have the letters where they are? In what sense? Do you know which way north is? I do not. Okay. Is that the way you look at it, pulling in? You look to the left and this is what you see? Correct. This is so I came in from this direction and this is what is in my, my mind's very poor artistic eye uh, of, of how the... Uh, I think you did well. So on the right was the woods, and then at the left you started seeing these items. The four that you have. Woods, yeah, yes, sir. There, this is a wooded area. Wooded area. There was a bit of a field here. There's clear. It's mostly clear up here, and then woods surrounding the, okay. the campsite. Thank you for for that. I did. I want to jump back just a second because I didn't finish Walmart, and I appreciate you getting that out of the way. If I could do that, we we'll give you a break for your from your workout. You you had indicated that you don't want to lose contact with Adam because that would be risky. Yes, sir. Because you'd lose track of his plan. That's a that's a risk. Yes, sir. And that that is the first time you've seen him since. The 11th of July, all the way to September at Luther. No, no, sir. No, there sir. was Belleville in between there. Yes, sir. All right, my bad. So you indicated you went to Walmart in the morning or in the noon. I guess you said noon. Mm -hmm. Sure, it was noon. With the the stroke of noon? No, sir. I'm not sure. It was, would have been in the between noon and one. Yes, sir. Okay, so early afternoon. Yes. Really early. Yes, sir. Not midday. Correct. What What's midday to you? Two, three, four. And three, did you four. get there before Adam and Dan? I did. I did. What time did they get there? You got there between 12 and 1 approximately. They would have arrived 15 to 20 minutes later. Okay. And... You drove separately that they went to the FTX themselves, I take it? I, I was following behind their vehicle, but yes, I was in a separate vehicle. So it's a, they were showing you where it was probably? Correct. And you, once they got there, let's say anywhere from 1220 to 110 or whatever, in that ballpark, you guys hopped in your car and drove a uh, half hour or so, 20 minutes to 30? Approximately, yes, sir. And you showed up together? <laughs> We showed up at the same time or just about the same time, but again, we were in separate vehicles. And they drove in front of you. They did. So you arrived at and parked for the parking, as they take it. That's correct. And did you see Adam and Dan, what they did once you got there? Uh, I didn't see what Dan did, but Adam and I had a conversation uh, very shortly after I arrived uh, in this general vicinity. Okay. And... You said you saw Eric Molitor show up or that he was there, he was present there, right? Not when I arrived, sir, after I, okay. after I, so he arrived after I did. How long after you arrived did Eric Molitor show up? Approximately one hour, sir. And how did you know what Eric Molitor, uh, what, how would you know? I, I knew his moniker, uh, his, his handle uh, in the group chats and uh, Mr. Fox would have introduced him to me and Mr. Fox, or someone asked me to pick up Mr. Molitor uh, from the 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 paved road here and, and driving down to the parking area. Okay, so you're aware that Mr. Molitor parked way out by the road. Yes. Yeah, just just for the record, uh, Mr. Burnett are referring to. Uh, I don't. Is this been referenced as an exhibit? Has it been admitted for purposes of the record? It needs to be referenced to. Uh, for purposes of the record, if that helps. Uh, well, there's two ways we can handle that. Uh, the court will handle it differently depending on how the attorney who is responsible for this handles it. Okay, I just. 
I, I think it makes sense to, uh, to at least attempt to have this entered as an exhibit. Uh, the drawing is not bad, sir. I think it uh, represents uh, enough for me to. Again, that's a project. That's why I respond. It's not. It's not a course. I'm not going to tell a party how to mess with their case regardless. Thank you. I would move for the admission of defendant Molitors. Exhibit. You sure I'm not on S? Yep. UV. You're on here. Thank you. Would you like to, so you're seeking to admit uh, this map that was drawn by the nation as a vehicle? Yes, I wondered if you could just supplement or I, someone could put woods in there just so. Uh, where the woods are and that would fill it out, I think, and provide. <clears throat> well, he's indicated an area um, with everyone present where the woods are. Do you want to get the right word or draw? I don't, I'm not very much asking. Whatever's easiest for the witness. Oh, okay, uh, Agent, if you could, I think you have some color there. Oh, okay. okay, if you would indicate. I may have him put some more items on this, Your Honor, maybe not, but if I could just uh, stay on that track of a possible admission of this. And everyone knowing that it's uh, that is my goal. As long as what he's adding is not Yeah, if he's able to. So thank you very much, Agent. I appreciate your cooperation and wondered if you could, uh, you, you had a conversation with Adam. I, I just, just Could you point that out again? And then we'll get to where you, no, I, I, thought, I, I, I was a laser pointer. pointer. Okay. Yeah, feel free to stay right there. Okay, and that was how many minutes after you, right when you got there, I take Short, it. Shortly after I got there, yes. And you, you, you appeared in your site how long after that? Uh, approximately an hour, sir. Approximately an hour? Yes, sir. Very good. And Mr. Fox, what was he wearing that day? What, what, what clothing was he wearing? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't recall, sir. What was uh, Mr. Molitor wearing? I, I don't recall, sir. object is the line of question in as far as what clothing people were wearing. I don't I see how that's relevant to the ultimate question at issue here, uh, whether the defendants are guilty of charge offenses. Mr. Brown? This came up at the uh, prior hearing uh, at the lower court approximately a year ago, and he was unable to describe his clothing. And he was also unable to describe someone else's, which will be my next and last question relative to what they were wearing. But they, he can't identify Mr. Molitor by his clothing or what he's wearing, is my recollection from the district court hearing we had. Okay, that issue can answer the question as to whether or not he recalls the clothing that Mr. Molitor Do you recall the clothing that Mr. Molitor was wearing? No, sir. I don't remember the clothing that he was wearing. Do you recall the clothing Mr. Higgins was wearing? You did see Mr. Higgins first. I did. Okay. Uh, I did see, I, I saw him, I don't know. If, did you say first? Did you see Mr. Higgins there as well? I did. And did you see what he was wearing? I, I've seen what he was wearing. Uh, I don't recall a t-shirt and he, he did not have a plate. I remember him uh, not having a plate carrier with him. A what? A plate carrier, body armor, sir. Okay. Uh, so that was that was notable to me. But uh, so he was in a t-shirt and I don't know if it was pants or shorts. Or okay, so Higgins wore a t-shirt and a no plate carrier. Correct. And those are the plates I think we've talked about that maybe you weren't, you haven't seen any part of this case, I take it. Correct. I they're plates that go on a vest and they're like bulletproof basically. Yeah. Ballistic protection, yes sir. Okay. And Mr. Molitor wasn't wearing that either, was he? I don't recall him wearing one, no sir. You don't recall him wearing? I don't recall him wearing one, correct. You okay. are correct. Are you sure or are you not sure either way or you don't recall? I, I don't, I did not, I, I do not remember seeing him wearing one. Okay. 
you didn't see him with a certain bit of clothing and say, this guy has no plates. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And where did you see Mr. Miles for please? An hour later. I, I picked him up. Picked him up at the road. You went out and got him at the road? Yes, sir. Very nice. So you, you rode with him into the parking area again. I did. You did as you were tasked. I did. Adam gave you a task. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, any discussion at that time with you and Mr. Molitor? Yes, sir. Just what, small talk, things like that? Small talk, generally, yes, sir. All right, nothing remarkable? Uh, when you say remarkable, sir, can you expound on I'll that? move on. So once you got in parked in there, what is the next thing you see Mr. Molitor doing and where? Uh, I would have been using that RF detector that we talked about on direct examination. Okay, and I assume he took that with him and had it with him when you saw him. Yes. So where was he holding it when you got to the street? It's not on the map, but we know it's all the way to the right. He had, I'm sorry, yeah, sir. I'm going to object to the question assumes facts not in evidence. He testified that the saw Mr. Molitor after they parked the car with the RF detector. The question was, where did he see him with it at the street? Agent, when was the first time that you saw Mr. Molitor with the in, in the campsite, Your Honor. Okay. At the campsite, Your Honor. All right. What does the campsite mean to you? The, this, this area, the, the, the Luther site. Okay. The Luther site. So when you say campsite, it's the whole site. That, that is what I mean, yes, sir. Excellent. And you saw, I thought you said he had it with him, though. That's why I asked that question that way. Mr. Molitor had the he, RF device with him. The next time I noticed him, he had the RF device okay. with him. And when was the next time you saw him? It would have been some period of time, less than an hour uh, after I picked him up. Okay. So an hour went till they got there, another hour, and then you saw him with the RF device. Approximately on the timeline, but yes, sir. And how did he get that, if you know? I don't know. And was that the first time you saw it that day? It was. You gave some testimony. Uh, so what, was Adam by himself at that time? Or was he, excuse me, Eric by himself? when you saw him holding it? Yes. Okay. You gave some testimony later, earlier, yesterday, that you saw Adam with the device. Yes, sir. So where does that fall in place relative to where Eric had it? My recollection is that uh, Mr. Molitor had it uh, and then presumed passed it off to Mr. Fox in fairly short order. Uh, yes. Okay. And that's all that happened with regard to the RF device? No, sir. Because you, you did testify that other things happened with it, right? That's, that's why so I said no. Can you walk us through that again and where that was on your map? Yes, sir. Uh, again, I initially saw Mr. Molitor with the RF device, or RF detector device, somewhere in this area. And as I said on direct, he was wandering the air. Uh, I didn't see him. Uh, exchange the, the the device with her, put the device in Mr. Fox's hands and Mr. Fox take the device. Uh, but the next, fairly, within minutes after that, I saw Mr. Fox using the device and going in a wider swath around the Luther site. So it's taking a, a wider geographic range than where I saw Mr. Molitor walking and wandering. Okay, uh, go ahead, but, sorry. Uh, and during that process, it was my understanding that the device alerted to something on Jenny Plunk. Okay, that's not your personal observation, though, is it? No, I learned that uh, from Mr. Fox. Okay, so let's go back to where you saw Mr. Molitor with the device first, where he was standing. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm indicating that on the, the monitor. Okay, and where were you standing at that point? It would have been somewhere around here. Okay, and you stayed right there. I take it, watched him so you could see what he was doing with that, right? I may have moved around a little bit, but yes, uh, I would have watched him for a while. Uh, 
time. And then at some point, Adam had it, and I was moving away uh, further down towards the parking area. Okay. How many feet? How many feet, sir? Yeah, if you had to estimate. At what point, sir? When you find when you saw Adam with it. When I saw Adam with it, um, say 20 yards, say 60 feet possibly. Okay. You know what a football field is, right? I sure do, yes, sir. You, did you play football? I did, yes, sir. Okay. You know what a hundred yards is. Sorry. You know what a uh, hundred yards looks like, right? I do. All right. And you feel that you move maybe 20 yards? Yes, sir. And when Mr. Molitor had it, you were how close to him and didn't move? Wait. Uh, say that again, sir? Well, you, you didn't say you moved. You said you moved when Adam had it, so I assume you didn't move when Mr. Molitor had it. And I just wondered how far away from you, Mr. Molitor were you when you saw him with the device? 30 yards. Thirty yards from Mr. Molitor. Correct. Yes, sir. Twenty yards from Mr. Fox. At his, at his closest, again, Mr. Fox is uh, moving uh, a lot more, you know, in a lot wider arc throughout the site. Did you testify that he was by the shoot house, Mr. Molitor, at the Luther site when you saw him with that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pardon me. Yes. Sir. Okay. But that's not consistent when you just had the. Can you put the shoot house on a laser, please? Where the. Yeah, right over there. Yes, sir. That's not where you pointed earlier where you saw Mr. Molitor, was it? Well, he wasn't standing in the shoot house, sir. Okay. What side was he standing on? That's the trailer, though, isn't it? Uh, I, the, the trailer is indicated with the T, sir. Okay. You said he was near the shoot house. Or the camper, which one was it? Do you recall your testimony yesterday? Was he, are you asking me, sir, whether he was closer to the shoot house when I first saw him or whether, whether closer to the camper? Uh, Do you know? He was closer to the camper, it was further down the hill. And he's 30 yards, and Adam's 20 away. Yes, sir. And you, you just you didn't move back, you just stayed where you were. No, sir, that's not what I said, sir. And you moved back for Mr. Fox? Correct, sir. All right, but not Mr. Molitor. He was going much more slowly and was further away from me, yes, sir. And the way you say that he used it, he's doing this kind of thing, maybe? Yes, sir. Using my hand over my head, going like this. Yes, sir. And you, you this is the guy, did he have, can you remember anything he had on? Because you're identifying him, his clothing, that he did this? Sir, I'd, I'd say the... From a evidence collector standpoint, the fact that the, he was using that RF detector was much more important to me than his clothing. So, no, oh. I can't uh, identify what clothing he was wearing. Okay, but I'm sorry, but you did pick him up. You got in your car, he sat next to you, and you went all the way in. Still? In this particular context, uh, what folks were, the, the clothing people had on was not of particular consequence to, in my mind to me. Okay. But if he had what I would call his full riot gear, you would know that when he's getting in your car. That, right? that would have been something I would notice. Yes. Yeah. Would it surprise you if the pictures we see that have him dressed in that way? It would not surprise me, no. And he had his, it looks like he's got the whole thing going on. Would it surprise me? No, sir. Did you see him at any time at the campsite that day, dressed to the T with regard to the militia outfit? Yes, sir. I think I did. All right. I think I, yes. When, when did you see him with that? Well, can we, uh, so the question is addressed to the P and the outfit. I guess, mm -hmm. if there's specific gear that you're asking, I, I want to make sure the reference is clear. Okay. Not necessarily, but there's specific things that you're thinking you might have been wearing that you saw or something like that, so you would identify specifically what we're talking about. Is there, uh, can you describe the change in clothing that he had on later and when that was? Uh, no, sir. It wasn't a change of clothing. I, there was a, my recollection is that he was wearing a plate carrier at some point. Okay. But you testified at another hearing that said he didn't have a plate carrier, right? Uh, no, sir. I don't believe I did. 
Okay. And when Jenny Plank had her cell phone buzz, who was doing the, the wanding, so to speak? Fox. Fox winded her, or at least got close enough where it, it cell phone went off. Something triggered it. I don't know what. You continued to see Jenny Plank at the event throughout the day, didn't you? I did. She wasn't kicked out, was she? She was not. She wasn't outed as a an informant or a bad person that didn't belong there with regard to telling on people or informing. No, no what happened was uh, everybody was asked to put up their, their cell phones. Okay, so that was kind of a reminder that everybody, hey, no phones here. Correct. Is that right? And it's kind of normal for these militia groups to have some paranoia, isn't it, from at least the two events you attended? To employ operational security? Yes, sir. Well, okay.
I just would be moving if the court wants to take care of that now. Really? Uh, and so uh, we're going to bring the UC back in so if we could ensure that the uh, cameras are in compliance with the court's order. <coughs> Two thumbs up. Uh, and all of the cameras are taken care of. And, oh, actually, all the mics are done. Anyway, yep, we can bring the news uh, back in. And then once the mark is back over here, we can bring the back in. Uh, everyone's already seen the jury, so Thank you, Your Honor. I move at this time for the admission of the finalized exhibit. Uh, proposed uh, defendant Molitor's proposed defendant Molitor's proposed exhibit B is in victory. Exhibits. Uh, we ran out of ink last night. We, we took care of them today at my office, and we'll be bringing them in Monday from yesterday. Some of the exhibits that we asked to have come in, I've made pictures. So that would be, and is, maybe take a picture of that as well, or would that be the the exhibit? That would be the exhibit. 
Thank you. You indicated you uh, at some point went to Walmart again that day. Is that correct, Agent? Yes, sir. And what time was that that you went to Walmart in the evening? That's when it was. Nine o'clock. Approximately. Approximately. And what? Was your car white? No. What car was What color was your car? Black. Black. Pretty far off. Yes. Is it a uh, maybe make? Is it okay to give us the make and model, or the at least the color and type? It's a Chevy Avalanche. Okay. And black. Just. And it was you and Adam that had driven there alone. No, sir. And is it an av Tell me what an avalanche is in layman's terms. It's a truck. It's a short bed truck. Okay. A Chevy short bed truck. Okay, so it has a back. Uh, it has a. It's a four seat. It, I'm sorry, four door. Uh, almost like a truck El Camino. Okay. It was at, at that time, at some point, Eric Molitor showed up? At the Walmart, yes, sir. And Adam left your vehicle? Correct, sir. And you were the only vehicle there between the vehicles that left that night? Correct. We were the first to arrive. Okay. You got there at 9. What time did Eric get there? Uh, approximately 20, 30 minutes later, sir. Okay. Adam told you why he was getting out to get in Eric's car, didn't he? I don't recall that, sir. He, did he come back and hop in your car? Not permanently. Uh, he may have come back into the car to wait for, he did come back into the car to wait for uh, the re remainder, the remaining folks for, to show up uh, for the surveillance. Okay. So Mr. Molitor would have been gone by then? As far as I know, sir, yes. Okay. And obviously when he got back in the car, he, he as a person who's worked undercover in narcotics knows the odor of marijuana. Yes, sir. And it's, isn't it true that when uh, Mr. Fox got back in the car, he reeked of marijuana? I, he may have smelled like marijuana, yes, sir. Oh, did he or didn't he, if you know? No, I don't have any specific recollection of Mr. Fox's smell. Okay. Didn't he tell you we just went over and smoked a joint with Mr. He, he likely did, yes. Uh, that, that was something he did, as I understood it, Fairly often was, was regular user. Yes, sir. And you testified today that Adam, in fact, there's been some exhibit, or at least an exhibit, that Adam looked up her address, the governor's address, on his iPhone. He admitted that. He, he said that, yes. He told us that. He didn't say anybody else did, not Sean Fix, not Dan, not Eric. He said, I looked at, meeting Mr. Fox, said, I looked it up on my iPhone. How long was uh, Adam out of your car? 10 minutes. Did you go to the, well, what time was it that you saw Mr. If you know, and you may have testified about this, what time did you see Mr. Molitor in the outfit that has the, I'll call them shields, whatever they are. The afternoon of that, the, the 12th, sir. What time on the 12th did you see him with his uh, military or at least the mid, mid afternoon? What, what are those items called again? Plate carriers. Plate carriers. Yes, sir. So mid-afternoon? Yes, sir. Which is what time to you? It was 3 o'clock? Approximately, sir. Yes, sir. Did you go to this, uh, and did you see him after that? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. And where did you see him when he had his plate carriers on? At the Luther site. And what part of the site? My recollection was it was in this general vicinity, sir. And that's in the trailer park, trailer, sorry, trailer camper area? In the area of the camper, yes, sir. Okay. That's mid-afternoon at 3 o'clock. Did you see him after that? Yes. And not at Walmart, but on the campsite? Yes, sir. Where did you see him and at what time? The following day. Okay. So you didn't see him after that?
We saw him just twice, once without anything you could remember, and then again, you saw him, hey, he's got plates by 3 o'clock. Yes, sir. And that's the only contact you had then with him on that date? On that day, yes, sir. Which you included also picking him up and being a good person to take him into the campsite earlier? I'm sorry, what's your question, sir? You also brought him in from the camp, I, I, from the road. How far was the road out there? How isolated was this place? It, it wasn't particularly far, sir, a matter of minutes, but it was a, a very rough road. Okay. So you, you, I think, testified you didn't see him go through, but I'll call the shoot house that afternoon. That's correct. Is it possible that you didn't recall? Or you don't you didn't see him. I, I don't recall seeing him go through the shoot house. Oh, all right. So as part of the getting back to your pictures, and I guess I'll wrap up this portion, but the Mackinac Island pictures were to keep credibility with uh, Adam, right? Or to continue the undercover operation, yes. And keep your safety in place. Yes, sir. Doing his tasks. Yes, sir. So Derek Molitor doing that, taking a video of a cottage would also keep his credibility. No, sir, that's entirely different. Um, Mr. Barnett, the question was where Mahler is taking a slow-mo video. Yeah, it, it's for his credibility and safety to go along with. Well, I, I think the agent can, uh, from his experience, is not going to identify whether or not that would be appropriate. No, sir. Uh, going back, I, I don't agree with you. Okay. Uh, going back to what I said earlier during the, the initial phases of your cross-examination, uh, I'm trying to maintain contact with Mr. Fox to advance the investigation. Mr. Molitor doesn't have any reason to be doing that. Like, if he wants to just go away and never have contact with Mr. Fox again, that's fine. Well, that's not true, though, because you, you keep in contact with, you did keep in contact with Mr. Fox to know what his plan was. 100%. Yes, and if, sir. And if Mr. Molitor was going to turn him in, would it make sense that he follow the track him? And listen to what's going on to see if this is really a serious plan. Thank you. Did Mr. Fox smoke marijuana any other time? Yes, sir. You, you did go on Sunday, right? I did go in some you, and you, you were there for two hours? I was there for two hours. You saw Mr. Molitor on that day, too. I you? did. Where was he on that day? He was outside the kill house area. Okay. What was he doing there? Standing? Standing. You guys saw it. And where were you when you saw him there? I was in the same, same area. Okay. So he's just standing outside the what you call Kale House, and you were standing next to him? Around him, yes, sir. And you're probably getting ready to go through the Kale House. That was the live day, live shooting, right? It was. Yeah, nothing was said at that time. Right? In, as far as what, sir? Well, you just said you're just standing around, right? I assume you weren't talking. To, to, to whom, sir? Mr. Malatar. Uh... I probably said hello and had general small talk with him. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Molitor was smoking marijuana back at the back shack when you first met him, when we took you downstairs. Mr. Molitor, sir? Sorry, Mr. Uh, Fox, my mistake. He was, yes, sir. Okay. Was there ever a time you were with Mr. Fox that he wasn't smoking marijuana? Uh, I, again, I, I guess he smoked marijuana 
at some point on the during the various meetings that I had with him. Okay. And on July 11th in Cambria, he was smoking there too? That I don't, that I don't know. You went out to dinner with him, didn't you? I did not. Did you stay there more than one day? I did not. And you, you know, by the way, the Mac and I are in photos, went to a wider group of people. I did. At Fox, who do you disseminate that to? The Wolverine Watchmen? Among others, yes, sir. Myself included in that group. Okay. So you know exactly who it was sent to? I, I did at the time, yes, sir. Thank you. And the property owned by whom? It was owned by whom? And like Lynn Luther? Ty Garvin, sir. Okay. And who's he? Is he one of the Wolverine Watchmen? He is. You saw him waving this around. It was not any near any people, was it? Didn't want somebody come up to them, hold their phone. He's in the oh, clearing, right? When you say this, do you mean the RF detector? Sir? I'm sorry, yes. Uh, it's correct. He did not take the RF detector, like you see at the airport or at a baseball game, and run it across somebody that I saw. Where, where good did Mr. Fox move? Pardon where, me, sir? where did he move with the uh, RF detector? Throughout the campsite, throughout the site here. Okay, thank you. Yes, no bugs, no bugs were detected. I say bugs, I'm using the old slang, but no wires, no recording devices other than one person's cell phone, Jenny T. I don't know yes. what I don't know what uh, caused the RF detector to alert to, to Jenny Plunk. Okay. Do you recall testifying in the district court? Yes, sir. Did you indicate at that time that you moved a hundred yards away from Mr. Molitor when you saw him with his device? Oh, sorry. Less than a hundred yards. Can I have just a moment? Isn't it true you moved away from those folks to protect your the fact that you had a recording device on you? Amen. We need to go back to the questions you asked earlier. I'd like, are you attempting to impeach him at all? I'd like to withdraw the okay. question. Okay, we'll withdraw the jury. We'll disregard that question. Go right ahead. Isn't it true you moved away from Mr. Molitor when you saw him with the RF device? I moved away from the RF device because I did not know, as I testified on direct, uh, because I did not know whether the recording equipment I had on my person was putting out RF. Right. And did you testify just a few minutes ago that you stood there and watched Mr. Molitor and didn't move? I did, yes, sir. 
So now, why do we have a different answer? I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir, if I could take a look at it or otherwise see it. I'm just asking you, because you and the, I'm... With, the prior testimony at this point is the prior testimony from earlier cross-examination. I had asked him if he, where he was when Mr. Molitor pulled out his RF detector. He indicated he stayed right where he was. He, I asked him what he did when Mr. Fox pulled it out, and he said he moved. So now he's saying that he moved away from Mr. Molitor, and I was just trying to find out why that was inconsistent with his earlier testimony today, not from a prior hearing. Sir, you're going to have to repeat that. I apologize. Okay. Earlier, you said, Mr. Molitor, you spotted him with the RF device. He's waving it around. Yes. And that you stood there in one place. I, I mean, I, I would have been in the, the same general vicinity during that time. Yes, sir. Did I stand there stone still? Uh, I, I doubt. I, I did not stand there stone still. Well, you told us you did. You stood, did you I not did, earlier? I did not. You said you moved for Mr. Fox and that you stood in place for Mr. Molitor. Isn't that true? Yeah, whether or not, whatever the testimony was, the jury will use this collective memory uh, and then they can make that determination. Thank you. So what steps did you take to reduce the risk that you felt you had? Moved away from the me, moved away from the area where the RF wanding was taking place eventually. And how far away did you move? Your Honor, I believe we've covered this ground a couple of times. The question has been asked. Well, it, it's confusing, Your Honor, because he said he stood still with Mr. Molitor. I'm going to try to dive down a little deeper as to only Mr. Molitor. The testimony earlier was that he was in the general vicinity in which he indicated. He indicated that he observed Mr. Molitor using the regular device. He then observed uh, Mr. Fox using the device in another area that he was depicted. Uh, at that time, I believe he indicated that he moved away and used a pointer um, to paraphrase from uh, the campsite area down towards where it says towards the bottom. Have I shown you some of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the word stone still, that phrasing was not used. Uh, the jury can recall in terms of phrasing so the confusion comes when we ask questions in different ways because then we try to go back and say, he didn't say that I stood stone still, but he wasn't asked that question originally. So I think it's very clear to everyone, uh, and the jury can use their recollection in terms of what he testified to. Let's move along. Thank you. Your Honor, I'd like to, I do have the district court transcript of the preliminary examination, day 404, where Agent Mark was subpoenaed and appeared for testimony. It's on page 83, line 6 and 7, approximately right there. Okay, so I see the attorneys in the room.
kind of uh, weapons were going on with uh, Mr. Higgins, if you remember? Sir, I'm not sure I understand the question. Was Mr. Higgins possessing a weapon on either day at Luther? Yes, sir. What kind of weapon was it? A long gun, a rifle. Did you happen to see Mr. Molitor with or without a weapon? Yes, sir. He had a weapon case when I picked him up. Okay. Did you see him with the weapon later when you saw him with his plate carrier? That I cannot recall, sir. You do recall seeing him with, with the plate carrier today, right? Yes, sir. Is there a reason that the district court transcript, you indicated that you could not recall whether Mr. Molitor had a plate carrier? Yes, sir. Again, I'm going to I can, I can, there was some interruption in the direct exam, but it's actually Mr. Alston's question, and it says on line 22 of page 45, Line 22 of page 45, Mr. Rolson's redirecting, I believe, Re or direct examination to the question I was asking. And I think, and just to be clear again, you said you can't recall Mr. Molitor had a plate carrier. Okay, and uh, so, uh, hey, did you recall that testimony? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Gardner, if there's any follow-up questions, I need to ask. Do you recall what your answer was then? It was, I don't recall. And can you tell us what your testimony is today? That I do recall. Yeah. Your Honor, if you could, um, that wasn't the extent of his answer. Um, what line are we on again? We started on uh, page 45 on in between 22 and 23. We'll call it 22. It's Mr. Ralston's question. And I think, and just to be clear again, you said you can't recall Mr. Molitor had a plate carrier. Answer, I cannot recall. I, uh, I will draw the objection. Okay. Thank you. Can you, and that was just to throw a date out, Thursday, September 1st. Well, one year to though, I think from today, you, you had a different recollection, didn't you? I, I didn't recall uh, a year ago. That's correct. How? That is, you know, memories usually go fade over time, right? Judge, this is uh, What two hours were you there on the second day? 10, 
a.m. to noon. What clothing was my client wearing on the 13th, if you remember? I don't recall, sir. Do you know if Mr. Molitor was camping out there? I don't know. I did not spend the night at the campsite, so I don't know. Did you have a discussion with Mr. Molitor at any time other than the pleasantries of hello, have a nice day, that kind of thing? No, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, when, when and where? Either day. To? I'm sorry, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, but you, what day? Uh, the 12th. Okay, because I think you testified earlier, you just said you exchanged pleasantries with him. No, okay. sir. Uh, I think you were talking about uh, what was occurring when we were outside of the kill house, and you asked me if I had talked with anyone, and, and then I asked for clarification. You said Mr. Molitor, uh, and that's, that's what occurred. So, yes, I had talked with Mr. Molitor. Okay, you saw him in the car, yep. had pleasantries there, saw him by the shoot house, kill house. Yes, sir. And had said what then? He advised me at some point that he had had some uh, medical training and he was serving as the, the medical guy uh, at the FTX. Okay, but you had previously just told us that you were exchanging pleasantries there, weren't you? No, sir. That's, that's not what I said. You said you were standing next to him. You, that's where you saw him with his gear. Sir, no, that's, that's not what I said. You were asking me about the, you were asking me about the 13th at that point. Now, as I understand your question, sir, it's inclusive of both the 12th and 13th. Okay. I'm trying to give you a full complete answer to your question. All right. How about on the 13th? What was said on that date then? I don't, I don't, that would have been pleasantries. So the only date that we would have talked about, even though we thought it might be inclusive of both days, would be Saturday, because that's the only time you talked to him, right? Can you repeat that question, sir? If you talked about this medical thing, that would have been on? The 12th. Yeah. Yes. But And you just said that you thought I was talking about the whole weekend, and that would have included the 12th, wouldn't it have? No, sir. No, I, I, I either misunderstood your question. I, I apologize. I must have misunderstood your question uh, from earlier, because when you were talking about what we said outside the kill house, I was referring to the 13th Sunday. Uh, so if you're asking me, did I have a conversation with Mr. Molitor at any time during that weekend that was more than pleasantries? The answer is yes. And what that conversation was, was in some substance that he was there as the medical guy. And that happened on the 12th? Yes, sir. I'm sure he wasn't standing at the shoot house on the 13th and not the 12th? I think he was standing at the shoot house on the 13th. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Judge, I don't believe I have any questions for this witness. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jackson, I'll go back to you when you read it. Yes, sir. I'll, just, uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Mark, um, Mr. Nunzio. Uh, you know what? We need that projector. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mark, uh, Mr. Nunzio asked you about the Cambria FTX and shooting at the targets. And um, I think his, question, his line of questioning was, uh, you didn't know who the targets were supposed to be that you were shooting at. Do you do you remember that line of questioning? I did. Okay. Um, and I, I think your answer was, well, the targets were target practice. 
um, they didn't necessarily represent anybody specific that we were supposed to be shooting. Is that correct? There was no discussion about this. Is this is meant to represent a specific person or persons? Correct. Okay. Now, um, is, it, is it ready to go? Okay. Can you put up um, 184T? This is 184T that we're showing. Yes. All right. You got a little bit of chat. The question related to King, which was long before this. This is Luther, 912. This is improper uh, um, rewritten examination. This is misleading. Your Honor, it, the original question was to Cambria, and the question was specifically as far as whether they were training for a specific target. And now I'm going to uh, ask him whether at this point in time, did he have an understanding of a specific target? So the questioning, uh, we're, we're sort of got the question from Mr. Nunzio relative to targets and identification. Was that the Cambria FPX, is that correct? Right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, your discussion is relative to the uh, Luther FPX. Right? Right. Following up on my question originally from the Cambria FPX. So, uh, and we're clear that this is from the uh, Luther FPX. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Nunzio, do you have an objection beyond that? Uh, I do. He answered the question regarding Cambria. He said he did not know who the targets were. They're trying to back your in with the Luther FTX. Um, now, who the targets are supposed to be? This is improper uh, rework examination. It's confusing. It's confusing to say the least. The witness has already answered the question. He said he didn't know. They were not identified. Now he's trying to rehabilitate with Fox's testimony. At least a statement from Fox. From 
Okay, um, so for the purposes of the record, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to throw things to be clear. Uh, when it was referenced as to the questions that were asked about Cambria, uh, the timeline for Cambria was the time, the timeline for Cambria. Uh, the question that Mr. Jocks um, asked relative to 184T, uh, obviously the debate is on uh, 124T, 184T, excuse me, um, and uh, that is for the Uber FTS. Um, and uh, based on the office group from talking to the attorneys, um, generally speaking, that line of questioning will be committed. Obviously, the future objections based on the exact questions uh, will be committed by the attorneys. And we can decide at that time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, on the screen, we have uh, 184T. Um, and this is uh, specifically a uh, recording of the conversation you had with. Um, who can you remind us of that? Mr. Fox uh, and Mr. The, Mr. Fox and the Null brothers. So both Nulls are present for this conversation? Yes, sir. And is this taking place in the car as you've described earlier? Yes. All right. Now, um, at this point, was it apparent to you who would be killed uh, during Fox's plan? Yes, sir. Objection, Judge. Nobody testified that people being killed. Your Honor, I, maybe I can rephrase the question. Okay, um, uh, then the objection will be sustained uh, if you'd like to rephrase it. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mark, at this point, um, is it apparent to you who would be shot during the course of Adam Fox's plan? Yes. And who is that? Anyone that got in his way and is specifically here, he's referring to the governor's security detail. Thank you. Now, thank you, Your Honor. Um, so let's go back to can we flash? Uh, Transcript uh, 181T. 181T. Yes, Your Honor. Now, um, 181T is the um, the conversation that you had with uh, Adam Fox and who? Bill Null, myself, and Brandon Caserta. And where is this located again when you're having this conversation? At the Luther FTX site. And uh, this remind us, um, what is Adam Fox doing here? Objection. Where's the question, Your Honor? All right. I would draw the question, Your Honor. As far as the, the timeline, this conversation, where is it represented on your timeline? It is uh, bubble number six. Okay, and that's uh, Mark and Bill Nall recruited by Fox, correct? Correct. Okay. So after having this conversation with Adam Fox, Bill Nall's present, correct? Yes. And yes, Brandon Caserta? We're on direct exam. This is not an issue that is to be addressed in a redirect. Unless he is rehabilitating a particular area, this is redirect all over again.
So, Your Honor, I'm intending to ask uh, questions regarding exhibits that we have that are audio clips and, and show the transcript, specifically 181, 184, 186, and 191, as well as the, um, there's no audio exhibit of it, but the conversation at the AMVETS parking lot with Mr. Fox, where he gives the, the tasks for each vehicle. Um, the purpose for reviewing those is that the, uh, after hearing those conversations and uh, participating in them to an extent, the nulls did not offer any objection to the course of action and the plan that was being described. Yeah, it's clear to be on the scope of cross. This never came up. Whether or not I asked the witness, did they object? How did they respond? We stayed away from that. This is clearly redirect examination. This is cumulative. Uh, and this is clearly a waste of time at this point in time. Um, this doesn't provide the jury with anything more other than going over this one more time. Just it's clear to be on the scope of cross. Judge, it will be on the scope of cross. And uh, this will not be a huge deal away from that. I didn't ask any questions that I didn't get involved in. And uh, quite frankly, it's redirect all over again. And it's a uh, human It is not allowed by the court. Thank you. Mr. Barnett. Yes, Your Honor. So the questions by Mr. Nunzio inferred that um, at least his client, I think he, the way he posed the questions was in regards to both nulls, uh, that they had a lack of participation in uh, the surveillance, that they didn't really know what was going on, that they were uh, you know, not performing the tasks uh, that everyone else was performing. That's mischaracterization. I simply asked what was done and what was not done. There was no inference about their lack of response or objecting to this. This, this I, I stayed away from that area. So, um, in general, uh, 181 is the conversation where uh, Mr. Fox pulls aside uh, UC Mark, Bill Null, and Brandon Caserta and asks them if they want to go on the surveillance and explains uh, that explosives may be involved. They're going to be surveilling the governor's cottage. So, obviously, at that point, Bill Null has knowledge of the surveillance that's going to be conducted. Right? So we never address that in, in cross examination. There, this is be wrecked all over again. Okay. Well, um, as to their knowledge that it was going to be surveillance and recon, that was specifically asked, and it was objected to that those words were used because the word didn't appear. So their knowledge was called into question on cross examination. So uh, certainly the objection is noted for the record. By the rest, you object as well. We object, Judge. We didn't ask any questions. Therefore. He can't explore it on behalf of Mike Nall. Period. If a party is asking that the uh, jury be instructed that it should be limited to one party, that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's see. 
was in line 184. So 181 being referenced would be appropriate. Uh, but Mr. Jacks, uh, 181 is appropriate as to the knowledge of what they were going on the trip. Yes, sir. That's the reason. Uh, let's talk about 184. And then to be clear, knowledge and my question would be lack of objection after hearing that. They, they, I don't recall a question. Was there a question? Did they ever object to the plan? A question. Was there a question on cross? Is that yes. what you're asking? Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there was a question on cross specifically to that, but I think that that would clearly tie into having knowledge of what was happening. Okay. Well, I, I would agree with that. I, I don't know. Or I disagree with that. I don't know that there's a. There was never a discussion that there had to be a presumptive. Can we put 184 up? There it is. Okay, so um, if I could have a minute here. So again, it's the same reason there's uh, obviously Mr. Fox is discussing here in detail uh, the benefits of conducting uh, the attack plan at the governor's cottage. Uh, it, he says they recon the residents on the island, could be done, but not a good idea because of the heavy security detail and explains here uh, that if there's a lighter security detail and the closest uh, police department besides the Elk Rapids Police Department is 20 plus miles in all directions. And if they can essentially uh, eliminate the Elk Rapids Police Department that there's 15 to 20 minutes head start on any other law enforcement. So again, just there not. Uh, uh, there was specifically a question I recall from Mr. Nunzio about uh, the Knowles lacking knowledge of the bridge uh, that he discusses uh, here in this clip, Your Honor. Yeah, I was not allowed to ask those questions, but with respect to what was said in the car between Mark and the Knowles, of course, that counsel down. This was hearsay. Their objection was hearsay regarding what was said uh, by the Knowles to uh, Agent Mark. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe counsel is right about what he said, uh, asking the question about what his client said about the bridge. Uh, but I believe there was a question before that about Mark's conversation with him about the bridge. Did Mark in introduce the bridge to him? If the court remembers, I asked the question whether or not um, Mark had said, do you want to go visit the governor's um, uh, residence? They said, no, I was shut down because it was hearsay. Then we went into the bridge question. That was shut down because we had a bench conference. The questions, that, that is correct. The questions relative to what I would kindly say, attempting to introduce hearsay perhaps through a question that was objected to and that the court did not allow. Um, I was not rolling my eyes. That there were there were other questions though of um, relative to who introduced or whose idea was it to go look at the vacation house. There were questions of whose idea was it to go look at the bridge, uh, whose idea was it to do these various things, uh, and it was indicated the agent testified and the agent on the action in a moment correct me if I'm wrong. I testified that I was the driver, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, and so, knowing that, this would be used to review what aspect of Because there's nothing here to suggest in the court's mind that it was not Mark that did that, that it was one of the Null brothers, for example. I think the question, actually, now that we're talking about it, was specifically whether he pointed the bridge out to the Null brothers. Um, whether they had knowledge of the location of the bridge.
Would it be a uh, question, what about the bridge? Didn't you identify the bridge that was supposed to be blown up with the nulls? Didn't you say, hey, by the way, there's the bridge? Did you ever bring that up in topic of conversation with the nulls? And the answer was, I don't recall. I mean, is that the topic? Yes, that's the question. Okay, can you give me the question and the answer? Yep. Okay, so question. Okay, oh, no, I just hit a button and moved everything. Hold on, I might be able to find it easy again. about the bridge didn't you identify the bridge that's supposed to be blown up with the nulls question mark didn't you say hey by the way there's the bridge question mark did you ever bring that up in the in topic of conversation with the nulls question mark i don't recall i may have Yes. yes, with the nose in the car, listening to the conversation. This is post AMBEC. This is later in the evening when they're writing around all this alleged surveillance. And now, now the question obviously is this was a question of the detective whether or not he brought. He identified the bridge or, the, or anybody identified the bridge relative to the tech being in the car. This is now an attempt to um, bring Fox's statement up about the bridges. It had nothing to do with Fox. It was between the detective and the knowledge with uh, Agent Mark. Judge, I'm going to join this. I'm going to point out that it's unfair to my client to allow this form of a redirect. Your Honor, this conversation takes place, I believe, on the way to uh, the Cadillac Walmart, if not maybe in the, the parking lot of the Cadillac Walmart. But, yeah, I remember this coming back, so I didn't that off. Yes, just let me know. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, when did this conversation take place? When did you go? Uh, that would have taken place either on the drive to or at the uh, at the Cadillac Walmart while uh, myself and all those and Fox are in the car. Prior to the Correct. Okay. Your the question was, and it's in the transcript, it's in the transcript that he is pointing out the dozen residents and they all say no. Then he, that, then he reintroduces the bridge. Hey, did you guys see the bridge? The Nulls respond, and I said, Mike, excuse me, Bill Nulls said, what bridge are you talking about? It had nothing to do with this conversation. I see. No, sorry. Do you want to judge us? Let's get that out. I need your presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying, trying, please. Okay. Um, well, the, the question itself, obviously, was about a different conversation, but the topic that was being covered was the knowledge of uh, the Nulls relative to that bridge. So for that limited purpose, the court does believe it's relevant uh, for um, that topic and 184 can be shown for that limited purpose. Uh, certainly the objections are noted for the record. Uh, and again, uh, I'll come back to the instruction at the end. Uh, for you, Mr. Uh, 
All right, just so just so that we're clear, my questions can only cover did they have knowledge essentially from this conversation, or was it the the bridge was brought up during the course of this conversation? And, and, okay. <laughs> Uh, that was 184, talking about 186. Um, if I could have one moment just to make some notes, Your Six. Okay, so can you put one eighty six up there? Just okay. So um, in this paragraph, uh, Mr. Fox says, "This is my ideal situation. Would be this: It's like we take her and we effing two boat system. I want to take her boat too. Take that." be out in the middle of Lake Michigan, drop the motor uh, into the bottom of Lake Michigan, et cetera. So there was um, a pretty extensive cross-examination, at least by Mr. Nunzio, on um, this idea of using the two, uh, a boat, uh, an amphibious attack, I think he described it as, and how they would use a two-boat system, et cetera. And um, I think the inference was that um, that they didn't, scout out, uh, or at least it was suggested that the surveillance didn't do, uh, um, I guess, uh, surveil the lakeside to know what the boat system was there, but this would show that they had knowledge of that portion of the plan. Yeah, that wasn't in dispute. I talked about the amphibious assault phase one and then phase two. The, we, we, we talked about with this witness. I don't mean to interrupt you. The court's recollection was that the uh, lack of preparation, the phrasing that I'm using, that wasn't the answer to a question, uh, dealt with the movement from once the amphibious assault had ended uh, from moving the governor from that location to Lake Michigan. That's correct. Yes. We, we, we brought that up. This I, is I, not. This I, is I, not. I, I, I think that was part of it. The second part was that they didn't scout out any boats in the area uh, as far as whether they could use the governor's boat. Mr. Um, uh, uh, yes. Barnett may have done that so, as well. So this is for the limited purpose of the boats that already been discussed? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We did discuss that. The, the agent testified that boats were to be used. He didn't know if had boats, but they, they, we brought that up that boats were to be but used. He, he, was asked, uh, he was asked some form of a question about as part of your path, you didn't go look at those. Uh, you recall that question? That my question. Of, of this particular witness, not what Fox Smith is going to take. I understand, but of course, as the implication is then that they didn't have knowledge of the votes and if that part of the plan, um, uh, that knowledge, um, I do agree that uh, this would be proper redirect to show that um, they did potentially have knowledge. Very well. Okay. Judge, you struck exhibit 161. Because of this, because there was no talk about going to Lake Michigan, there was no plan. You struck Exhibit 161 in whole dealing with this. Uh, I didn't admit, or I didn't allow for the admission of 161 uh, because the way the court understood it is the individual who had shown uh, Agent Angela uh, the location that is marked uh, or near um, where it is on that map. Uh, as well as the title of uh, mainly uh, the person who had shown him had not. And this was not, or this on your record, this was not explored. Therefore, this should not be allowed. This is improper and outside the scope of cross examination. But it was explored to the extent the court has detailed it uh, and for the limited purpose of what we're talking about. Now, the court's attention. Sure. Are we, is the jury going to be saying only incident or just the limited portion or limited testimony? Because, again, they're looking at the entire exhibit, which is beyond the court's ruling regarding the limited the, the limited response or the limited area that the court's going into. Um, 
No, I would ask that it that it either be redacted and or the witness testify consistent with the court's order regarding the limited response. Okay, let me think about that one and come back to it for a second. Um, let's go to that was 186, right? Yep, let's talk about 191. So, this portion of it in the words. Okay, so there was questioning about, I think it was from Mr. Barnett, the evolution of the plan um, from Mr. Fox to attack legislatures, kidnap legislatures, to then the governor's uh, kidnapping her, and then ultimately to the governor's cottage on Bird's Lake. So um, the transcript for 191. If we're on page two, Fox says, we might be able to get her in Lansing, but we ain't getting out of Lansing with her. Um, he then says, that's a effing high-speed gun battle. We're all effing dead. Um, and then, again, Bill Null and Mike Null are present. Uh, Bill Null said she would be hanging in the halls because that's where I would do her. Fox um, then says, we've got to get her, got to get in there first, man. She's got an effing army. Uh, waiting for her in Lansing. Oh, yeah. Then Bill No is the one who says, oh, yeah. And Fox says, up here, she don't. Like I said, we've scouted this out already. And in our scouting time, we know there's a little police department there. He talks about the bridge further. So it shows how that uh, that plan evolved, John. Okay. Uh, Mr. Parnell, I'll start with you on this one. This is the uh, repeating again. That's the first word we're looking for. It's cross-examination. The court does recall uh, there were multiple questions raised multiple ways relative to uh, the plan being changed from attacking the legislators and enhancing uh, to the vote and how did we get there and any of those sorts of things. Uh, so the court does believe that that is an appropriate Judge, um, I was going to try to the questions were related to Mr. Molitor. How do the notes get to tie up to well, this question? We're going to talk about differentiation at the end of the topic as a whole. Um, and then uh, I wrote down four numbers and then wrote down four numbers. I can't recall. There's uh, one other of them the conversation at the end that's part of <clears throat> And uh, this is the one where there is no audio, is that correct? That's correct. Right? Okay, uh, walk me through the substance of what would be presented uh, in the purpose for it. So, um, if I could have a minute to uh, articulate this. Um, so, uh, Mr. Josh, while you're doing that, uh, does any party work quarter to five? Um, my understanding is the next one is anticipated to be short as travel here a pretty significant distance. Um, I would propose having staff go let the jurors know that potentially we would be going beyond five in case they need to contact no, anybody. Does anyone have any issue with that? No, Judge. Okay. No, Mr. Gardner, if you could let them know that we may go beyond five o'clock if there's anyone that they need to know about. Mr. Jackson. Again, um, there's discussion in the Anvex parking lot uh, where Mr. Fox is out the tasks to the different cars who are there. Okay. Um, and uh, there it was questioning that would imply that the nulls were not aware of the task that their car had and that they were not participating in that task. So um, one, twofold, show knowledge that they were present for that conversation. And two, um, they knew what they were supposed to be doing and they were actually doing it. Uh, Agent, uh, for that portion of the discussion, uh, was Mr. Null present? Yes, sir. Was Michael Null present? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Null, do you have any The question to the agent was, who tasked the, the uh, surveillance? Uh, he originally said Mr. Fox, and then he also added C.H. Dan. The question didn't involve the, the Nulls whatsoever. In fact, I used the car and told him, so this is, again, redirect examination. There's nothing in dispute. The agent said, Fox passed him, and then he said, Dan, CHS, Dan passed the car with the surveillance. 
This is just hammering a point over and over again. That is just accumulative. This is redirect. There's nothing in this field. Okay. Mr. Sutton. Support. Mr. Barnett. Support. Okay. Um, well, as with the discussion of 181, uh, really those two tie together in terms of the knowledge of what they were going to be doing uh, for the recon mission. Uh, so the fact that they were present when the directions were given, I think, is a fair game because it goes to knowledge. Um, and so it will be limited for that purpose. Uh, now, we don't know what the clip is. So this one doesn't have a clip. This was the uh, one where the way that I understood it, the audio was not picked up. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure if it wasn't picked up, but we don't have it as okay. an exhibit. Uh, this was just testimony from what uh, the agent was testifying to from the parking lot when they were given instructions. Okay, so, so what's the question and answer? Presumably, the question would be that you testified uh, that um, Mr. Fox, uh, when they were in the, when they were in the parking lot, uh, gave instructions to the three cars as to what they would be doing. Uh, presumably, the answer is yes. Uh, or, and we'll talk about this in just a second, but I presume the question would be subject to a decision I have to make in a minute of uh, where the most present when uh, those tasks were on. Does that generally be the question? Yeah, sure. Okay. So there's no limit to this? That's correct. Okay. Is my understanding. But, but that would be limiting what the witness said with respect to Fox and CH Van tasking the car with the surveillance tasks. Yes, so we'd ask the court to include, or the question should include for purposes of proper um, redirect examination that both Fox and CHS Van had tasked the cars with uh, the surveillance uh, the duties. Because that would be a mischaracterization because what they're trying to do is just go back to Fox only and exclude CHS Van. Mr. Jax, would you raise the question to identify who was giving the instructions? Uh, I guess I guess let me say this. If the question did include who was giving instructions, it would have to include both Adam Fox and CHS. Okay. Um, Can I do it in a two part? Because I believe the way the testimony came in was that Adam Fox said it first and then CHS Dan came and said it again. That is consistent. That's fair. So, that's 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 I don't I don't have an issue right now. One one thing, Your Honor. I yep. I had Exhibit 181 on my list, and we've been going over this for a while now. And I thought I covered it before we took the jury out, and we talked about that. This is the uh, discussion at Luther. Uh, I think we were in the middle of that. Okay. All right, and I don't think so, and I think the court was was going to allow us to revisit that show again for knowledge. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. 181 in the ambass will be knowledge relative to what we're asking us. Thank you, Your Honor. And how will we turn the limited response via the entire exhibit for the response? Again? Yep, so we're going to get the question format and then uh, differentiation or limiting instructions as to which the to which. Um, in terms of question style, uh, I don't know that the exhibit um, can be redacted for that purpose in, in terms of removing text. What could be done is, for example, uh, you know, on um, cross examination by Mr. Nunzio. Uh, the topic of the knowledge of, I'm going to get the, taking the S off in just a minute, uh, the knowledge of the nulls uh, was discussed about uh, whether they knew about the plan. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And then um, I think the exhibits and then the AMBET discussion for the course ruling could be referred to. Uh, and so, you know, then we discussed that. So that was discussed and they were present for the instructions being given. Things along those lines because then it only goes to the knowledge. Could the portion that the court's confining the witness's response to be read from the exhibit book instead of putting the entire exhibit up there? Because the entire exhibit would be beyond the scope of cross and it would be against the court's order regarding a limited response. So if the response can be read from the exhibit itself, they do have the exhibit book up there. So we can answer that question. Um, 
consistent with the court's order. Yeah, I understand the concern. I, I think if the, if the questioning, if the phrasing of the questioning limits it to the topic, and then if if the exhibit is referred to with the laser pointer, for example, and a specific sentence is highlighted only, I think that's sufficient for being able to uh, take care of that. So, if, if I can just jump in, we're only going to show one paragraph for each exhibit. Sure, and, and I assume that the residents would be uh, using the laser pointer for that. But I, I think the phrasing of the questioning limiting it to the topic and moving it back. I think that provides sufficient protection. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then, relative to the discussion of uh, which each one applies to, uh, Mr. Seiber, uh, you're asking about the uh, court instruction theory that uh, this portion of the read only applies to William Knott. Did you believe I have to? I didn't ask any questions. Therefore, they can't redirect. Judge, my biggest concern is, is any redirect on this re-breaks the bell again, and I can't unring it, and it prejudice my client. Actually, I think it's perfectly appropriate for a party to ask for an instruction as to differentiation. And when I say differentiation, I mean at the top of only apply to one person. Uh, the court can inform the jury of that, and it's perfectly appropriate for a party to ask. Uh, I just, the court just has to be clear on what's being asked so that I can get information. <coughs> so, what I would do is uh, bring the jury back uh, in, um, in uh, I'm sorry, there was a topic of discussion that related only to Mr. Molitor. Is that correct? I wrote down the end. Yes. That was the last topic I was going to cover, Mr. Jacks. Uh, yes, Your Honor. It was 191. Um, is it my objection, Your Honor, regarding that the plan was relative to Mama's own plan? Yes. And it did not include the nulls, and so... Yeah, and, 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 okay. I agree with that premise. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to ask it, because the problem is I keep asking Mr. Jobs to change his working questions in order to conform with my rulings, which I don't think is inappropriate. So, I guess there are two ways that it could be done. Um, when he gets to a particular topic, let's say the knowledge, there are questions on cross examination as to what uh, William Null's knowledge was of uh, what the surveillance and recon was going to constitute, and then going into the questions. Uh, that would be one way to do it, because he's towards Mr. Null. Uh, similarly, he could do that for the question in the topic area as to Mr. Molitor, or the court can, you can sort of stop and the court can provide a separate instruction from me. I, I, do you have a preference, Mr. Cyber, or does that, if he premises it in the question, does that in your mind direct them sufficiently as to who it applies to? Judge, the danger is, is if he adds an S, he yeah. would I don't know the way of mistrial, but certainly, but certainly he won't add an S because he certainly said a couple of times he won't add an S. So what he would do is when he gets to the topic area, so for example, he might say something like, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard, um, you know, under cover mark, Agent Mark, you've heard testimony on, on cross-examination from Mr. Nunzio as to William Knowles' knowledge of what was going to be occurring on the you kind of scramble trick with that, however he wants to phrase that. So it would be directed towards William Null. That would be sufficient. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any problem doing that? And if we can give you a couple minutes to work out phrasing on that kind of um, on the Just one more. Sure. Okay. <laughs>
you got to see people? No, Your Honor. Um, with those uh, concerns outlined in the uh, directions from the court, I understand the objections as we went along, and those are certainly noted for the record. Uh, anything else? Well, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Moran. Right. Just know we're talking about Exhibit 191. I don't think Mr. Moran's going to see the same as Mr. Moran. I don't think it's going to see the same as Mr. Moran. I missed his name here again, if it's possible. I think we'll allow the proceeding with the first rule. Uh, and, uh, all right, so great. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so let's start with, uh, can we show Exhibit 181P on the screen, please? I'm going to give the jury an opportunity to review. Uh, Is there a specific question you'd like to correct? Yes, Your Honor, if we could, can you scroll a little bit? Please take the number again, please. 181T. Thank you very much. Just this paragraph. Yeah. So I'm, okay, yeah, the, the larger paragraph here, that's what I'm going to have. Uh, my question is going to be directed at. So I'll give the jury an opportunity to review it. First. Judge, what's the question? I'm sorry. Um, Mark, you were uh, challenged on during the course of Mr. Nunzio's cross examination regarding Bill No about uh, his knowledge of uh, the surveillance uh, tasking that day. Do yes. you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Sir. And this uh, recording, People's Exhibit 181 and 181T, um, was Bill Null present for this conversation? Yes, sir. Can we show him 184 again? Roll that up. Um, I'm going to, we're showing 184T on the screen. I'm going to, again, give the jury an opportunity to review it before I ask my question. Your Honor, we would request that the question be asked so that the witness can answer the question. We're going to transfer this is uh, outside the scope of what we should have so uh, Mr. you want to ask the question and then if there's a specific portion of the transcript you would like to direct me to go ask the question. Yes, Your Honor. So, um, Mark, so during Mr. Nunzio's cross examination, he challenged you on uh, Bill Null's knowledge of the bridge. Do you recall those questions? Yes, sir. And <clears throat> What we're looking at here on the screen is 184T. Um, is uh, Bill Null present for this conversation? Yes, sir. And is the bridge discussed? It is, yes, sir. Um, specifically, can you point to the, the line here in 184T where it is discussed? It begins with the sentence, there's a little town right there. There's a little bridge that goes over it. And who is that uh, that makes that statement? 
Fox. Uh, my next question is going to be, um, <coughs> all right, the, again, there was a line of questioning regarding, um, by Mr. Nunzio regarding uh, William Knowles' knowledge of boats being used during the course of the plan and the lack of surveillance regarding the boats. Do you recall those questions? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to ask you to take a look at 186T. Yes, sir. Can we get that up there, too? All right. Um, 186T, was Bill Null present for this conversation? Yes, sir. And um, who's the speaker here? Fox, sir. And uh, does Fox make any reference to boats being used during the course of his plan? He does, yes, sir. What does he say? Uh, it begins with the sentence, this is my ideal situ this is my ideal situation would be this is like we take her here and we fucking two boat system. I want to take her boat too, and then continues on, sir. Next I'm gonna direct your attention to um, some questioning by Mr. Barnett. He asked you about uh, the evolution of the uh, Fox's plan, how it evolved from uh, attacking legislatures in Lansing to attacking the governor in her cottage home on Birch Lake. Do you recall that line of questioning? I do, you yes, see. And I'm going to direct you to Exhibit 191T. Yes, sir. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the top of the second page. Yes, sir. Do you see any uh, discussion by Mr. Fox there about uh, Lansing? I do. And what does he say in regards to it? Uh, that it was not a... We might be able to get her in Lansing, but we ain't getting out of Lansing with her. That's just a fucking high-speed gun battle where we're all fucking dead. Now, the, the AMVETS parking lot discussion, uh, you were challenged by Mr. Nunzio on the tasking um, and uh, the knowledge of his client, Bill Null, in regards to that tasking. Do you recall that? I do. <clears throat> When Adam Fox gave you the tasking for uh, your car during the course of the surveillance, was Bill Null present for that conversation? Yes, sir. And I think he said CHS Dan then came up and, and kind of repeated the tasking. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Was um, Bill Null present for that conversation as well? Yes, sir. Thank you. Back again. Yes, sir. When we're talking about the tasking by Mr. Fox yes, sir. to the vehicle that you were in with the null, yes, sir. is that captured on any recording device, the, the two recording devices that you had on your person? Yes or no? No, sir. Okay. Um, the tasking by CHS Dan is captured on recording, correct? I, I don't recall whether it is or it is not. Okay. So. But the tasking of Fox, Fox is not on recording, correct? In the AMVETS parking lot? AMVETS parking lot. The tasking. As, as far as I know, sir. It's not, it's not captured. As far as I know. Yes, okay. Sir. And you had at least two recording devices on you at that time when the tasking took place, correct? You had at least one. I had at least one. Okay. Okay. And he was near you when he, Fox was near you when he was tasking the vehicles, yes, correct? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. 
but that's not on that's not on recording. I not that I have reviewed, sir. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Thank you.
Uh, so uh, we did get uh, a couple of questions uh, from the jury, uh, one that the court uh, will answer, and uh, similar to one that they answered in the case for tasks, um, whether uh, auto-loading uh, assault rifles can be full automatic assault rifle in training, is that legal? Uh, my answer would be the same as uh, not the sloppy one I gave you, but the one of um, the uh, Bill Null or Michael Null have now been charged with um, possessing, a, uh, possessing a weapon because of the weapon's nature. Right? So if it wasn't that, uh, can you recall my discussion about the felony firearm and how that relates back so it's not the nature of the weapon itself? Is that a sufficient answer from your perspective, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Okay. Any objection to that? No objection. No objection. Mr. Burnett? No we don't. Okay. Uh, the agent government is for you. Um, what were the nulls, uh, I think, that's what we're doing, doing during the nighttime surveillance as you drove around up rapids? I think you've answered that in terms of portions of it, um, but if you're able to generally answer that for the duration of the time. Looking around. I, I just, looking around. Looking around. Looking out the, the windows of the vehicle. Uh, Mr. Wilson, any follow-up questions? No. Question number if I may, looking around, looking around where? Outside the vehicle, in the environs, in the surroundings. But when someone's sitting in a vehicle, they generally look out the vehicle anyway, correct? Yes. It was pitch black outside, correct? It was black outside. It was dark outside. How many, how many lights in your ventures were illuminating streets, cars, homes, or businesses? How many lights, sir? How many lights were illuminating cars, businesses, I didn't, streets? I didn't count the number of lights, sir. It was really dark, wasn't it? it? It was dark, sir. Okay, so they're just in 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 your in your just a summary. They're just looking out the window, correct? They're looking around. Yes, they're sir. looking around. Yes, sir. No more questions. Is it? It's after midnight uh, on a rainy night in September that they're in the car with you driving around near the governor's house, right? Correct, sir. Nothing else. Okay. Did you drive by the governor's house that night? Yes or no? Yes. You went down her street? No, sir. But should you go down? Uh, Williams. Okay. Um, you were not at a vantage point from where you were to see the governor's house in the car from inside the car, correct? Correct. Okay. So driving by the governor's house, they couldn't see the governor's house from inside the car, correct? Correct. And you're, and you stand on your testimony, they're just looking around. They're looking to see, they, Looking out. You uh, said looking around. Well, in, in fact, in one of the clips, Mr. Null says I'm looking. No, I'm asking you. The yes, question looking. from the jury was, you said they were looking around. And I'm telling you, sir, yes. And now you're changing your testimony. I'm not, sir. That's okay. Inaccurate. No more questions. No questions, Mr. Burnett. No questions. No questions. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Agent. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's at the bottom. My apologies because we're going to travel here for a year of distance. And we expect the testimony to be short, uh, so we're going to continue with that uh, this afternoon. Um, Mr. Wilson, you're next door. Good job, Judge. Hi there. My name is Sean Michael Toth. Anything else now? 
T O T H. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Toth, uh, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. How old are you today, sir? 38 years young. Yeah. Can you tell the ladies uh, and gentlemen on the jury what you do for a living? Uh, right now, I'm a blueberry farmer and I work at uh, uh, Menards Hardware. Okay. I want to take you back in time to uh, the year 2020. Uh, can you tell us uh, what county you were living in back then? Uh, Jackson County. And uh, can you tell us if uh, you, you will uh, where you were working back then? Oh, Mug and Bob's gas station between Munich and Grass Lake. Okay, Munich, uh, that's in Jackson County, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, and we can open up that uh, book right there, if you would. Take a look at those photos there. Uh, do you recognize anybody in any of them? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, exhibit number one. Exhibit number one, yes, I see the two people. The very bottom left, uh, far left on the right corner is Joe, and the next person to the right of him is Pete. Okay, did you know them by Joe and Pete? Yes, just uh, Joe and Pete, not last names. Okay, uh, how did you know them? Oh, uh, they were regulars coming into the, the Mug and Bob's gas station. How often would they come in? Uh, one to twice every week, if not more. Okay, and uh, tell us if you will, uh, was there something that made them stand out to you? Uh, they were always carrying guns every single time I saw them. Okay, and what kind of guns did they have? Uh, usually uh, handguns on their shoulders and sometimes with uh, AR rifles. Okay, and uh, did they ever speak when they came into your uh, mug and bops there? Every single time. Okay, and what kind of things did they talk about? Uh, mainly, um, especially at first, conspiracy theories. Okay, did they ever talk about the governor? Yes. Tell us about that, please. Uh, they just, they couldn't stand the, the lockdown. Uh, they are just calling her all kinds of names at first, like tyrant, Nazi, this whole lockdown is like a uh, big plot to take away their guns and uh, their rights. Okay. They were uh, talk about what they were going to do about that? Uh, yes. Tell um, us about that. First off, it was just like kidnapping and scaring her. Like, just starting off with, then it was kidnapping and killing, kidnapping and killing and raping. Okay. Uh, did they ever say how they were going to do that? Uh, pretty much by force. Okay. Um, did they ever talk about explosives? Mm -hmm. uh, is that a yes? Sorry, Mr. Wilson. Oh, you can question. Could you repeat the question? They were talk about explosives? Yes, they were. Okay. Did they uh, say how they were going to use those? Ah. Uh, First off, they're trained to even be able to use it properly, and they kept on saying they were going to grow up a bridge. Talk, they, they, so you're the mug and bops, and you're working mug and bops, right? Yes, sir. And Joe and Pete are talking about blowing up a bridge. Do you remember what month of the year 2020 they were talking about that? Oh, that was in, I believe, late July and August. Okay. And uh, did uh, did you ever form an opinion as to why they were telling you this information? Uh, Objection, speculation. 701 allows him to offer a lay opinion. I'm sorry? 701 allows him to offer a lay opinion. On what they were going to do, Judge? It's no, no. As, uh, as, uh, the question was, did you ever form an opinion as to why they were uh, telling you these things? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I guess, Mr. Wilson, I'm having to go What would the relevancy be of why he thinks they were doing it as a defense in this case? Offer a proof here. Uh, did there ever come a time that you called uh, the police to tell them about these interactions with Joe and Pete? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us why you did that. I um, pretty... Oh, wait. Could you repeat the question? No problem. 
did you ever call any law enforcement agency or any police agency to tell them about what Joe and Pete were telling you when they came into the mug and bobs? Yes, I did. Okay, and, and tell the ladies and gentlemen on the jury uh, why you called the police. I felt like it needed to be documented. Okay, did something so, happen that caused you to do that? Yeah, they um, they got caught. Okay, I mean, when you say they got caught, they get arrested? Arrested. Okay, fair enough. Um, you don't know any of these gentlemen behind me in the courtroom today, do you? No. Okay, and just so that I'm clear, the mug and bobs that you worked at was down in Jackson County, right? That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Toko, for the questions, Judge. No questions. No questions. Uh, no questions. Mr. Garner? Yes. Another question? Maybe. Thank you. Sir, how long uh, did you hear this information before you called the police? I think you said July or June. Was it July? Uh, pretty much when it came back from the armed protests. Okay. So you have a touch point. You have a place where you know this happened, and you said it was in July of 2020? Mm -hmm. Said yes, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. And the fair arrest was on October 7th, that you didn't report them from July until October 7th. Is that right? Yes, sir. And how long after October 7th did you make that? About a week. All right. Thank you so much for your answers. No questions, sir. Ms. Ross. Hey, I, just tell us about what our protests you when you were talking about there. Oh yeah, um, that they didn't really like speak about uh, any super big violence uh, toward the governor until after their protests. And what month was that protest in? Uh, it was uh, April thirtieth, May first. Okay, thank you very much. Nothing else, Judge. No questions, sir. So okay. So basically, in between. May to August, I'm sorry, April 30th, I think was the protest and we didn't even inside the Capitol, is that what you're referring to? Yes, sir. Okay. So from that point on to October 7th, you had a red flag raised against these two, Joe and Pete. I don't know what a red flag means. You had serious concerns? Yeah. And then by October, you made that phone call. Is there a reason you didn't call Senator in October? I did not want to be involved. Thank you. No questions. Nothing. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, because I was about to forget, uh, you all have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, what we'll do is uh, send you all back. Uh, if there are none, uh, does the, do the attorneys have any problems with the court allowing court staff to dismiss them? If there are questions, we'll bring them back. Correct. Don't check. Don't check. Okay. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to combine these two things. Uh, so we'll excuse you back there if there are certainly any questions that's perfectly appropriate. What I'll have Mr. Arden do is check back with you in a couple of minutes. Uh, if there are questions, we'll bring you back in. And again, that's perfectly appropriate. Okay, don't worry about the time. We'll take care of that. Uh, we'll bring you back in. Otherwise, if there are no questions, what I'll have her do is simply the issue for the weekend. So I'm going to say now, have a very nice holiday weekend. You don't have to come back until Tuesday. We'll start back up at 9 o'clock. Please remember the restrictions. Uh, that are in place. It's a holiday weekend. I know you're going to see folks uh, and a lot of people may be talking about it. Uh, please just dissuade them and tell them that you can't talk about it in any fashion. Uh, hopefully we don't have any issues, uh, but if we do, um, I will talk about it on Tuesday. And it's also a good time to remind everybody, obviously, when you're back in the room together, uh, just remember that uh, there can't be any discussions about the case. That will be like this. Okay, all right. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay, everyone can be seated. Uh, the record didn't reflect that the jury is out of Portland. Uh, Mr. Wells, I'm going for you all. We need to discuss it. No, sir. Have a good weekend. Uh, just that I know the court has re-instructed many times to carry the legal notes and uh, other uh, documents behind.